guys can let me know if everything's working the way that it should be working. I think so. I think so. I believe so. All right. Uh, welcome to everyone who's uh, joining us here live. We're about to get going here in a second. If you are listening to this later on audio or watching you know, the recast on YouTube, if you want to join us live, go to Utreon. Because on Utreon, we could do stuff like what Babyface is doing there. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if Walter has any uh, guns near to him. I don't right now, believe it or not. I don't have anything. Let's see, Walter, what you got, Walt? Walt's, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I hear a bunch yeah. of plates. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I got dinner close to me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> always, I mean, always. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Boom, there you go. All right, so the place to join us yeah. live so you, you can see us. You can't one-up me like that. Oh, Lord. There we go. Oh, so I'm not trying on. to one-up anybody. He's getting yeah, crazy now. We got to getting... oh, show off our wood. Damn it. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, listen, the place to, jo to join us to see all the shenanigans live is uh, Utreon slash Who Moved My Freedom or WMMF Podcast. That's the place to go. Hopefully you guys can hear us loud and clear, etc. I'm going to push the button and get this kicked off right now. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. We wouldn't be able to keep the Who Moved My Freedom podcast going without the support of great companies like Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory provides 100% U.S. made firearms and awesome binary option triggers. Their focus and purpose is to provide freedom tools to all Americans, especially those in not so free states. So when you're in the market, please consider Franklin Armory. All right, we are live. Let me get everyone up into uh, the broadcast window here. There we go. We got Babyface. We got Walter. There we go. Okay, jazz hands, guys. Come on. Let's get the jazz hands going. We are live. I hope you guys have your big girl panties on out there. This is episode 919 of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I am your host, Hank Strange. Today is Free For All Monday, of course, and we have a special guest joining us so i'm going to recognize him right now there he goes goa's jordan stein <laughs> what's up jordan <laughs> hey how are y'all good to be back on yes i can see jordan has very good internet without a doubt also with good internet joining us babyface p there he goes with his awesome internet of 3d printing oh he's 3d printing stuff like he's printing up a storm walter keller who also has good internet He's joining, most but, uh, days, yes. yeah, he's you know most days he's got a horrible camera, but he's joining us. <laughs> I, right. I got I got to knock something. I got to knock something. Um, <laughs> so um, as I said, free for all Monday. We have Jordan Stein of GOA. We've got Babyface P. We've got Walter of Safety Harbor Firearms. All here on a Monday. Shout out to everyone in the chat. I see. Uh, let's see who we see out there. I see Asper Warrior. He's very excited that Jordan Stein is joining us. Uh, shout out to Mike Asper Warrior. Flying Rich is out there. He says, "Yo, yo, yo," as Flying Rich is want to do. Forty two chilled. I see out John there, Crump. huh? John Crump's in the. Oh yeah, there. John Crump says, "Who is that sexy man?" Oh, thank you, John. There's a lot. I of, appreciate there's, it. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of sexiness up here right now. <laughs> Jordan, what's going on, man? <laughs> uh, not too much. Just uh, living the good life, staying busy. So. Okay. All right. So do you wanna do you wanna let the folks know um, exactly what you do? I, I can't remember when was the last time you've been on, but I think things at GOA have changed a little bit, right? You're in a different yeah. place, all that. Explain that to the folks. Yeah, so so I I have a different role at GOA. I'm now the Southeast Region Director, and and I help uh, fight for the rights of gun owners in the Southeast. And I uh, I really like what I do, and I can kind of focus in. Um, uh, on on a certain uh, amount of states and uh, just kind of tailor, you know, what GOA needs to be doing in, uh, in the South. So, awesome. All right, very cool. Congratulations on that. You know, we're glad you're still out there. I mean, part, I, I mean, you mm -hmm. said the Southeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the best region of the country. I'm just saying. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? But now, um, in that Southeast region. Uh, Florida doesn't fall under your umbrella, right? Wait, what? Correct. <laughs> no. Yeah, it, yeah, it's our <laughs> breakdown is a little odd, and it, and it was dependent upon uh, 
like were directors we had in different states and you know Luis Valdez our Florida director and and Jed are down there they're already rocking and rolling so we just kind of let them do their own thing and and I have about 11 states yeah so. I, I will say Luis Valdez is awesome highly on top of the his thumb is absolutely on the pulse of politics here in Florida yeah uh, like like no other so yeah I will give him credit <laughs> he's like a pit bull man uh, it, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's impressive yeah. how focused he is on Florida and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh-oh, breaking up there a little bit, but I think I think we're good. Oh, I hope we're good. Uh, okay, there we okay. go. Everyone's here. Did you hear anything here. that I said? <laughs> you, you were saying something about Luis Valdez. If you, you could say it again. Uh, he's a Like you said, he's a bulldog, and he's a, the, he, it's impressive how focused he is on Florida gun politics. Yeah, yes. Uh, what exact, exactly which 11 states? Someone's asking in the chat. They want to know exactly which 11 uh, states. So, so we got uh, Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, Al- Alabama, Mississippi, uh, L- Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Okay, cool. All right. Yep. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if anyone else has any other GOA questions but there's been some there's been some new people added to GOA. I don't know whether or not you can talk about that, but I know there are some new like Gun World celebrities in GOA. Is this <laughs> is this being discussed or not? I don't know. Well, we we can talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. We're mm-hmm. rolling tremendously. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've worked for GOA for seven years now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, starting as an intern and mm-hmm. like. The growth that I've seen in the last, you know, five years has just been exponential, and each year just gets bigger and bigger. And mm-hmm. so I'm I'm thrilled to be working with good people like Luis and and you know in my region um, we brought on you know Eric uh, IV88 all right better 8888 as our Georgia That's director. Right. I've known him for a, a long time. Um, and we just he just wanted to get involved and that's how how we wanted to step up and help um you know so we're, we're growing and i think it just spoke speaks to how goa has grown and the type of people that we uh were attracting and bringing on yeah absolutely i think um that's that was good news to me that um uh, you know eric of iv 88 is uh 8888 i should say is part of the goa team and that's another very committed guy uh you know so far so i'm telling you you know that's some it's some good people getting on the roster so i'm very happy to uh, hear that um i don't know if walter or babyface have any other questions uh for jordan here i feel like we've known jordan since he was like what 12 years old or something like that and so <laughs> i think still in high school <laughs> <laughs> I feel I like I feel on, like that. <laughs> I saw something on the interweb today. I think from uh-huh. Trump about okay. a new lawsuit. GOA one. Yeah, yeah I got the email. North Dakota. Is that what that was? Okay. Is it? A, yeah. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Our our latest lawsuit is, of course, we're, we're suing over Biden's homemade gun ban, and uh, we launched it out of North Dakota. Um, but you know, it's and I'm sure we've discussed. You know, it's been discussed on this show in great detail. But you know, they're trying to go after the the you know the evil homemade ghost guns, the the P80s. Where you know, the thing about it with me is Americans have been building their own guns since before the foundation of our republic. You know, well, building your own you guns as an American is apple pie, and you know, we know that trying to restrict you know, ghost guns or, or have more background checks or regulate gun parts is, is it going to stop criminals from buying guns? Exactly. Um, <laughs> or, or criminals from getting guns, you know, is this going to stop us from protecting ourselves and protecting us in the manner in which, how, how we choose. Yeah. So, um, um th- I always a- joke around that, mm-hmm. uh, making guns is the second oldest profession. The second. Probably. Yeah. Making behind, weapons uh, in general. Se- second. Behind, behind the first oldest profession. Uh, uh, but um, uh, yeah, human beings have been protecting themselves from the beginning. Every single living creature has been protecting themselves. I mean, this is what we're talking about. When the, the first moment we were able to pick up a stick and club somebody else over the head with it, we were doing so. Yeah, 
when the first brother punched the first other brother in the face. Cain and Abel, right? <laughs> you know, it sounds like a joke, but it it's it's so ridiculous. And I think one of the big things in the news, I, I guess we should just, you know, you know how it goes, Jordan, with Free For All Monday. But there's actually people out there now trying to um, just, like, literally get rid of the to have an amendment to get rid of the second amendment have you guys seen that news Good luck. yeah and, well, uh, and like i saw that headline today and i just kind of rolled my eyes because like i remember writing an article gosh probably 2017 2018 of, mm-hmm. of some artist in new york city uh he wanted to have an amendment to repeal the second amendment and and i kind of wrote an article to refute that but the, the thing about it is the constitution the bill of rights they don't give us the right to defend ourselves they don't give us the right of, of self-defense you know uh that's inherent among us you know i would say self-defense is a god-given right um right. you know but but truly it is um you know, as a human being, you have an inherent right to defend yourself, and the best way to do that is through gun ownership. Um, and, and that's what the Second Amendment's about: self-defense from not just the common criminal, but also ty- uh, from tyranny as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's funny. Right before we came on air, I saw a clip of uh, I guess Biden had some kind of gun control speech today, and during he was interrupted by one of the was it a Parkland parent or one of one of the parents out there. And that parent is like, no, you're not doing enough. You need to do more. Um, I don't understand when these these people, and I know, I get it about people who've lost their kids. That's like, you can't, you know, I don't, I couldn't think of anything worse. But you also, these folks don't understand that none of this gun control that they're calling for has worked, done anything for them, is going to change anything, you know, and maybe they should think about going the other way and actually protecting schools. You know, and thinking more about uh, having people there to protect their kids, including themselves, if they want to do it. I don't know where you guys are are at on that, but it seems like futile that people just keep, you know, begging for more and more gun control, and it's not doing a damn thing. Well, you know, my my heart breaks for people who lose, you know, children and and where tragedy strikes, and um, you know, but like we also have to realize that. Uh, you, you know, gun control, it doesn't work. I, you know, Hank, you just pointed out how, how it's failed. But, you know, we need to be able to protect ourselves. And, and you know, we need to repeal the Gun Free Schools Act, you know, the, the federal law. We need to enable uh, willing teachers to carry guns. We also need to, I would even say, just, you know, let average Joes who want to go to a high school football game or, or whatever carry guns on campus. You know, and, and protect ourselves, you know, because mm-hmm. we know that's where these shootings happen. Study after sh- study has shown well over 90 percent these killings happen in gun-free zones. Yeah, that I think and nothing. It, it, how can you stop someone who's crazy? How can you stop? stop back up. Go ahead, Walt. Stop back up. Mm-hmm. The guy down in Miami, down south, was a known problem. Mm-hmm. The guy who just did this other thing was a known problem. Mm-hmm. If you look back through all these major shootings, even in Chicago, the people shooting each other in Chicago are all known. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not a mystery who's doing it. But you have to have the balls to round them up. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's true. I think the, they're very that, known to law when, enforcement. When have, it's not like they're just known to people. They're lo- known to law enforcement. Yeah. They're criminals. Mm-hmm. They're criminals. Mm-hmm. They're criminals, and they go in, they go out, they go in, they go out. Mm-hmm. So. No matter how many laws you make, no matter how how touchy feely, all the parents crying, terrible, it's not going to stop a damn. This guy in <laughs> Chicago, this guy, this crazy nutcase in Chicago, has been known since he was a kid. I think when he was a kid, his mother left him in a hot car. That's I was well, I was reading about that. Oh, no, stop, 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 stop. That's oh, not the reason he's brain. a fucking nutcase. No, joke. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm just saying from then. <laughs> From then, this whole family, these people were known and people were aware of them. I don't know, and you know. And they commit crime after crime yeah, after crime yeah. after this, crime. This guy, oh, thre- this guy so on social so media, so this guy was threatening people. You know, he's all, like all of that stuff. Text, it's a textbook thing One, that and no, none, none of the laws that exist did anything about it. Include him, including what social media is doing by coming down on a lot of social. people. 
Like social so, media is coming down on folks like us because we're gun guys. Either we buy, we sell it. guns, we own it, or all of that. They come down on us, and they and they beat the living daylights out of us. But these folks, they never do anything about. Social media encourages the nutbags because it gives them an audience, and mm -hmm. a lot of these yeah. people think that they're a star because now I can get on, I can get on YouTube and I can just be myself. I can come right out and say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And do you, let me see. They're blaming UPS for gun stuff, right? Well, why don't they blame YouTube and Facebook and all that for this stuff? Hmm? Why? Well, they're not going to do that because that's the money behind these politicians. <laughs> someone someone in the chat said, um, what's it, Shinzo, uh, what's the name of that guy, Shinzo Abe? Uh, what's, what, what's the Japanese, how do you pronounce uh, the prime minister's uh, name? Is it homemade gun. Abi? Homemade gun. I want to say it's hey. Abi. I thought it was Abby, but I, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. So that guy who did that, that was a homemade gun. Wasn't three wasn't three D printed, homemade gun from parts in 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 one of the mo like what more gun laws can you have over Japan? Well look, look, I think all, all over the world we 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 you see, uh, uh, Fire's Block puts it out sometimes or the, you know, about all these uh, in Africa and Europe and all these other places where mm -hmm. people make their own firearms. You're not gonna stop it. You're not going to, you know, somehow, it's just like if, if your mama tells you don't go in that room over there, the door's locked, don't go in there, what are you going to do when mama's not there? Uh, uh, go go right in, go right in. You're going to find out what's in that room. Yeah. So if they say you can't have no guns, guess what you're going to do? Yeah. You're going to start yeah. making them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know, <laughs> you, know, come on. you can have all the gun control laws on, on the books. But the problem really goes back to evilness, and we have all these, you know, these mass shootings, and people like to root out if if it was a Trump supporter or a liberal or a communist, whatever. And, and I, I look at that, and you know, we we can research for ourselves the person's beliefs or or whatever. But to me, it really doesn't matter because that person is evil, and mm. you know, there's no background check that can stop an evil heart. But it, you know, if I'm ready to and prepared to defend myself, I can stand in that gap and protect innocent life. You could do, um, so, you and, could do something about you know, it in that moment, yeah. right? You could do something exactly. about that moment. Yeah, mm. I think. Well, yeah, I mean, it's true. What can you look? If you could wave, let's 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 play a magical game right now. If we all put our magical powers together and we waved wands, and we got rid of all the guns on the face of the planet, are we going to stop horrible things from happening? No. 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 The answer, no. The, the answer is no. We can't do it. Uh, uh, if we wave a magical wand, can we get rid of a representative twerking on the beach with her ass up in the air? Can, oh, yeah. Good luck with and that. Then, now you, everybody, laughs about, everybody laughs about that, but mm -hmm. that is part of the problem. Well, that yeah, that just proves that, that these people don't the, take their job serving the people seriously. That's part of the. Well, I always that's say that's proves. part of this this process of everything. Just kind of mm -hmm. do whatever you want, wherever you want, anytime you want. Nobody mm -hmm. cares, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think every time, and you guys can tell me, correct me if I'm wrong here, but whenever these bad things happen, and I talk to people in the real world about this stuff, they don't tell me, "Oh, yeah, we got to get rid of guns." They say to me, "You know what?" I think I need to get a gun because obviously when bad things happen, as Jordan is saying, there won't be anyone around that could do anything about it except well, you. You're the, the only person the police, that's going to be there that could do anything about it. Um, you are your own first responder. You know, it's, it's a cliche, okay. but it's so true. When, mm -hmm. when seconds count, police are one minute away or minutes mm -hmm. away. Um, and you have to be prepared to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're they're not there to stop it. Mm -hmm. No, they're yep. <laughs> they're not there to stop it. It does. I don't care. I, I mean, mean you know, we have. Yeah. They, they might show up. The, the the thing in Texas is a prime example of cops show up. What they do yeah. is stand around, mm -hmm. and the guys inside shooting people. Okay, so that's not. They're not there to protect you. They're there to clean up when it's all over with. Uh, to follow <laughs> rules. To yes. To to make reports. <laughs> Uh, follow there's, rules, there, make there sure more, rules and there, regulations. There, there are people in the office who are more worried about being sued than they are about anything yeah. else. They are there to stop parents from going in and trying to save their kids. They're definitely there to do that. Well, they stop cops from going in. Yeah. Cops stop the cops from going in. So, yeah. What 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 happens then? What who who pays for that then? Someone should pay a price for that, right? 
never do we see never do we see uh, those folks pay a price for it. We don't see we don't see it in Parkland. You know, I always tell people right. like here in Parkland, that guy got arrested, pled guilty. He was a known, <laughs> we can't even sentence he him. Known, he was a known problem, and Obama had a had a they had put this thing in this in this program to lessen the amount of uh, of uh, uh, minority. Um, People in, in jail. Incar incarceration. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what good did that do? Also, so, I could just tell you this from personal experience because it happened to me when I went to school in New York. Um, schools don't report a lot of crimes. People don't realize that. No. the cr Crimes that happen in schools, they don't report it because they don't want that on their records. That happened to me in my school that I went to 30-something years ago in the 80s. All these things happened and the school never reported it. And... That's one of the things that happened with that guy, right? He was uh, he was up to stuff and doing things, and no one reported it. He was unknown. Yeah, yeah. And even outside of that, and, there were people that knew there was something wrong with him and didn't do anything about it. So. And 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 nine times out of ten, when this stuff happens, these people have all been all been interviewed, all been talked to. They they they've threatened people. This guy that did that stuff the last time, he's been threatening people on you know mm -hmm. online. Um, and, but you know we have to. We have to. We, we can't. We can't. We can't do anything till they, till they kill people. <laughs> it's like. I mean, this uh, is a circular conversation. Until someone decides to take your life away from you, for whatever reason, you can't do anything about it unless you could do something about it in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that nine know. times out of ten. I'll be just. You know, I'm not trying to bring anybody down yeah you could be carrying but you can get jumped you yeah. can be carrying and you get it's shot not a guarantee yeah you can be car yeah it's one yeah. of those things it's yeah. not a guarantee we're, that you're gonna make we're it gonna take alive, a quick break walt quick break coming right walther arms has been making concealed carry handguns for over 90 years starting with the ppk today walther is based in the good old us of a and still builds quality firearms like the ppq and pdp for personal defense and competition so when you're in the market please consider walther arms we wouldn't be able to keep the who moved my freedom podcast going without the support of great companies like walther arms all right, so we're back here, um, Walter. I, I should let you finish your your thought there. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, you can you can finish your thought. Right, you can get out. I'm your sore. Yes, I'm sore from yesterday too. By the way, Next, <laughs> mention my shit. arm, my forearm is sore. <laughs> forearm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, what are you guys doing? Pistol shooting my... and having a good old time. Yeah. I don't oh. know, man. My shoulder's sore from fifty cal and twelve yeah. gauge shotgun rounds. You poor. Over and over listen and over to these over. poor babies. Huh, Jordan? Oh, oh, my my poor my poor arms Ooh. and shoulders from suffering from shooting guns. <laughs> that, complaining about shooting guns is like complaining fishing. We, uh, complain, complaining about the fish not biting, you know. Just be grateful you're actually shooting guns, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll show you something. Let me see. Should I show this? Walt, uh, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show this uh, thing that. That Walter brought all his vehicles in uh, his guns over here. Look at what brought Walter brought his this little itty bitty car. This is what Walter came over here with yesterday. Look at that. Can you imagine you know, Walter? I, getting... I bet that gets really good gas mileage. So oh, yeah. I, you know, I actually I think... going back, I it was getting right around thirty, right around thirty. Really? Well, that, that, that's a little underwhelming in my opinion. Yeah. With, so, with the cruise control on and just letting it go, you know about. Not too much over the speed limit. Yeah, this is just miles, guns. Walter's miles. taking t taken out of there. Yeah, so thirty miles per gallon. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, not bad. No. Yeah. So I'm trying to find some stuff from. Uh, I don't know. Are you into bullpups, Jordan? I can't remember. Uh, here we go. I, I like all the guns. You like all the guns. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, Jordan. Very political. Very political <laughs> answer there. There you go. Check it out. We were sh we were uh, testing. I don't know if we could say shooting, but we were testing these. We were we we shot them. We got a couple of rounds went through these uh, Glock bull pups that we had. That was happening over the weekend. You know, um, that was three D printed stuff. My favorite part is where we were burning stuff down, and I'm trying to find that right now. That's mm. because we were doing your work. That's why you like the best part of that. that yeah. Was. Well, I mean, with a flamethrower, you know, that is. Yeah. yeah. And also joining us, by the way, uh. Listen, Flying Rich was here, so big shout out to Flying Rich. 
but also Joe from Shooting Gallery NE was here, and I had this big pile on my property that needed to get burned down. So this is uh, some footage. I mean, this was this was a, a lot of stuff that needed to get burned down here. So I'm giving instructions. There he goes. My, my flame to him. Gallery. My flame to him. Yep. Come on. I, I, that's me. I'm telling him, come on, get in there and put the fire on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of what we were getting up to yesterday. Everyone was... I forgot how f much fun a flamethrower is. I don't know if you've ever... Yeah. Flamethrowers. If For the folks out there, if you've never used a flamethrower, I think, you know, it's well worth it to get a flamethrower. Here. Uh, by the way, the uh, cinematic mode on my uh, camera is... Look at that. That's, look at that uh, rain, too, man. Look at that I, rain. I can't... Yeah, I can't believe how good that looks. Yeah, this is cinematic mode from my freaking iPhone. That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, iPhone still rules as the best phone. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a mega fan of Apple or anything like that, but they still got the best yeah. phone. Yeah. So that's kind of. I'm just, I'm just trying to go through some stuff and show you guys what we, what we were up to here. Let me see. Walter, here's Walter shooting his fifty. Over the weekend, no, actually, this is isn't this that's, uh, that's, that's flying riches. Yeah, this yeah. is riches fifty right here. Uh, come on, won't shoot it. Let me see if I can just come fast on. forward this. I think this is slow mode. Oh yeah, there we go. It's about to go. There we go. Come on, go for it. Yeah, yeah it's a lot worse. It's a lot worse in person shooting shooting a fifty. So. Did you did you do any shooting this uh, weekend, Jordan? Uh, I didn't get to shoot this past weekend, but I shot quite a bit on the Fourth of July, okay. and uh, I had a lot of fun. My um, I had a little Fourth uh, of July party, and my uh, uh, I have a brother-in-law who is in the army, and it, as well as his wife, and they came out over to to North Carolina, and we shot some, and. Um, uh, we we got out a couple of my ARs and I think my brother in law and, and his wife were quite impressed with with my AR because like this is like nicer than my M4 and uh, we just kind of shot and everything and I'm like yeah yeah it's, it's you know you know it goes to the term of like you know military grade uh, guns <laughs> and like right. how much like my guns are nicer than military yeah. grade guns and all and so. Uh, so yeah, but we had a, had a grip, grip, good time. We shot ARs, we shot handguns. Also did a little bit of little skeet uh, and everything with some shotguns and all. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's a lot of fun. What does he use? Go ahead, Walt. Go ahead, Jordan. Where do you call home? I, I live in uh, now. I live in Castle County, North Carolina. Yeah, he moved. Oh, okay. he, yeah, he used to be. Mm -hmm. You got your own place now. Yeah, yeah. I moved. Uh, got a. Just about twenty acres of land. It's oh. it's a start. Oh, cool. um, Very nice. But that sounds amazing. It's, it's a lot to mow. <laughs> Take that much. But get goats. But, you know, I, I can. I'm I'm really blessed to be able to shoot and hunt on, on my own property and and just you know kind of enjoy my passions because you know at, at GOA everybody we live this stuff. You know we carry guns, we shoot guns, and you know now I can go out and and shoot you know, in my backyard pretty much, you know, anytime I want. And I know a lot of people aren't, uh, don't have that luxury, but you know, what I try to do is I just share it with people, you know, mm -hmm. um, whether it's people from church or, or just, you know, friends, I invite them over and let them shoot. And it, it's kind of been a, a thing now where, you know, new people are coming over to my house and I'm you know, showing them the very basics of, of firearms. And, uh, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's very nice. Uh, what did you have a follow-up question there, Walt? No, no, no. You got it. Yeah, yeah. twenty acres is cool. Yeah, that's yeah. a. You can have your own range. You can have everything. You know, mm -hmm. living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have one room in this house just for guns, or did you? I don't know if your wife allowed that. I can't answer that question. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing that's a yes. I'm going to take that as a yes. There's one, you know, one room for the guns. The, you know, when you guys have when you guys have kids, they can all sleep in 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 one room. They they don't need their own room. 
That's you know that just spo- that just spoils kids. It's you know it's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, they all need to just sleep in one room. Matter of fact, don't need not even one room. Just take a closet <laughs> and put bunk beds in the closet. And they can sleep in there, and then you get more room to put your guns in. You know, that's absolutely. A, yeah, take it from me. I gave my kids their own room. It didn't help me. <laughs> There's no damn appreciation for that. So. There you go. Uh, Babyface, did you have something that, did you have a question that you wanted to? No, living on 20 acres is the dream. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. I can just imagine. Um, now, I was asking about room. I hope there's room for us to come up there. And, uh, Anytime. And stay up there. Okay, cool. Well, you bring your own room when you come up, Hank. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is kind of true, you know. It, you, did you put in some hookups for RVs? You need to. I think you need to install well, we, we an RV. We can work hookup. something out. We, okay, we can cool. work something out. Yeah, I just need a water line, a sewer line, electricity. That's it. To dump. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be like thirty amp. You know, specifically, Make, just put in a thirty amp thing. And, a, and an internet, a good internet connection for. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if he's going to move in, he's going to become yeah. your new roommate. If you have, a, <laughs> if you have the cable, you could just do what Patrick does and just run a line out your house into my van. It's fine. It worked for a while, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it worked. My, my, I might as well just sell you an acre, and you could just just that, have, make that your own. Okay. I mean, it's, it sounds like it. So yeah, that's fine. I'll pay you. I'll pay you in ammo. <laughs> that that could work. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, what other things? What other things are going on? I don't know if Patrick, Walter, anything uh, going on with you guys that you want to. I know I was hanging out with you guys yesterday. You probably had enough. I had the this morning. I had to dewater all my firearms. Yes. Did yeah. You post... No, I did that when I got home yesterday. Yeah. I, w- Walter, did they... you post some kind of video about that? Because I've been getting dings on Facebook. Yeah, I, I... Yeah. I did a little one. I think I did it on Instagram, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, was it Instagram? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got people. I saw some kind of responses somewhere, and I was like, oh, Walter must have posted something uh, with his. Yeah, I posted it sitting there when it was raining on us. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Okay. Oh, okay. Actually, let me, let me turn it this So what kind of way. feedback did you What kind of feedback did you get from that? Uh, it's had 1,700 views. Mm-hmm. Um. People were just kind of chuckling about it and stuff, and um, humidity gonna be a bitch after that. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Just no, no real, no hate or anything, which, yeah, you know. Um, I, I mean, it's not the first I'll, time. It's yeah. not the first time we've been shooting and it started raining. So, yeah. Um, aren't know. guns meant to be out in the rain? Oh, well, Am I wrong well, on aren't, that? Aren't, aren't, aren't military grade guns designed to be out <laughs> in the rain? <laughs> Yeah, the, every every gun should be meant to be out in the rain. I think. I don't think yeah, that should mess yeah. anything up. They were they were starting. To, there was a couple little spots of rust that were starting, but it was just real. I had some, stuff. some some rust spots on mine. I I, I just tried to I just I blew them off with some air and gave them some WD and and ran a patch through the bore and boom, they're good. To yeah. Go. So aren't you guys? Well, don't you think those rust that rust was already there or rust instantly showed up on your gun? How does that happen? Oh no, it was it was from the rain. Because mm. they, the, the they were surface in, that I got was from the rain for sure. Yeah, yeah. They were sitting in my um, all the all the striker fired guns were sitting in that one bag that I have them in, mm-hmm. and the, the moisture just stayed inside that bag. So, mm. um, but now you left no them worries. in a humidity chamber, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were in a in a bag like this, you know. So, yeah. No, it, yeah. Um, all, right. all of worry. Florida is a humidity chamber. Just yeah, like, that's true. That's very yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, rust is good. That... Rust means rust is its own protection. In time, it is, yeah. yeah. It just yeah. And I'll keep it oiled. That's certainly totally one way of looking at it. If, if you're trying to get that rustic finish. <laughs> oh, yeah, some no, people pay for that. I'm going to send you guys a bill. Patina, right? Patina huh? finish. Patina, yeah, patina. Well, I'm going to send you a bill for letting you use my flamethrower. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you didn't let me use it. <laughs> I, I, I lent that to your significant other. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, Flying Rich wants to know if your if your shooting mats dried out. The match, I, when I got one thing I did, I went to the shop when I came back. I got back in town around five o'clock. Went to the mm-hmm. shop. I rolled those out inside the shop, and they were dry this morning. Rolled them up really nice. Put them away. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I did. I so did, I did do that before I before yeah. I went back home and chilled out. So. Yeah, I don't know how much sh uh, shooting Jordan has done in the rain. Uh, <laughs> do you? So, some uh, kind of a funny anecdote. Um, my dad several years ago bought an AK, and uh, that day when when we brought it home, it was raining, and I really wanted to shoot it like really bad. And my dad is. Um, he doesn't. He hates rust. He likes things to be very clean and well, um, well maintained. And he, he was kind of hesitant about it. But I'm like, Dad, that gun was made to be drugged through the mud and just abused. We can shoot it in the rain. So we went out and we just mad dumped the AK in, in the rain um, and, and came in and then we cleaned it. But you know, um, so that, that's one of my shooting stories in the rain for sure. Yeah. Was it? Was there anything wrong with it after that? Oh no, not at all. Mm -hmm. No, we just wiped it off, you know, dried it, it didn't even rust. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, guns can rust just sitting in the safe, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. People, yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen guns people put in these, uh, in some of these uh, sleeves and stuff, and they and they rust inside the sleeve, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a mess, yeah. yeah. You could, you could, it's yeah. also a good way to tell what has a good finish or not. What's the matter, Patrick? Harley's car is not starting at the hospital. Uh oh. She said, "Oh yeah, come, come help." And I'm like, "Can you security? Just go ask security. Of course, I guarantee they have a jumper, like a battery jumper." Oh. You're you're at a massive hospital complex. Ask security. But somebody, All as right. I was on the phone with her, somebody came up and said, "Hey, do you need your car jumped?" Oh, so, okay, cool. Key, right. well, you tell me if I'm wrong here. Key goes in, turns on, and goes click, 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 click. That's it. Yeah, you need a battery starting to die. Yeah. So or you got a bad, bad, or, or, bad starter. No, I don't uh, think it's a bad starter. The, the battery no. in her car is the better part of like six or seven years old, uh -oh. which is well past its prime. So. Oh, yeah, you need a battery. Yeah, we may be buying a new battery tomorrow. Yeah. So. In Florida, yeah, yeah especially. Yeah, Florida I don't think we've ever changed it. She's had that car for six or seven years. So. Yeah. If you get three anyway, years out of a normal battery down here, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This is the worst place. I've never seen any anything like Florida for batteries, man. Florida kills batteries, it kills windshield wipers, it kills trim, the black trim on your car. Like, it deteriorates cars real fast. Yeah, you could yeah. tell. I was just going to say this with the guns. You could tell if you have a good gun or not when you put it out in the rain, whether it was finished nicely and all that. And the same thing with your car, man. Like, Honda Civ okay, Honda Civics, good cars, <laughs> but the paint jobs suck on a Honda well, Civic. Why, and in does Florida, it, why does it fade so fast? Because it's thin. It's them. It's really thin. The paint is really, so. really thin. Yeah. yeah. You can always yeah. tell, like, you know. Yeah, well, it, you know, you, you see my Fiat Abarth, what's going on with that paint job. It's, yeah. it, but it's, the car is 10 years old, too, so let's just. Yeah, overall, overall, the Abarth has a good paint job, but there's certain body parts that they must have painted separately, and that has very thin paint on it. So whoever whoever they farmed out the job to of painting that, um, you know, it was it was pretty bad. But a Honda Civic, worst paint job I've ever seen on a car <laughs> yeah. in a Honda and Civic. That, and that, and that's, that's a, that surprises me because Honda's, you know, decent quality stuff I, normally. Yeah. I had a friend, okay, it wasn't a Honda. He had a Corolla. I had a friend with a Corolla that he had all throughout, like, out of high school, all through college, all through early part of being married and everything. And the paint on that thing chipped mm -hmm. and faded and rust. It was bad looking. Yeah, uh, but uh, it almost seems like they rattle, they rattle can Hondas or something. They don't do a good seems... paint job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where they save the money. The engine perfect, paint job sucks. I'm gonna go yeah. on mute. I will be listening, but I'm gonna Facetime and see if she needs. Oh me yeah, to okay, yeah, absolutely for sure. You're right good. Back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. If you want to complain to us about some cars, Jordan, you uh, be happy. <laughs> P please feel free. It's. It's well, car time. What an yeah. You know, I, I've, um, I, I, of course, 20 acres need a mechanism to get around it. And okay. so I have a four-wheeler. So I have a four mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've, sometimes it's difficult to keep it running, um, you know, through various things. And, like, I oftentimes have a battery charger on my four-wheeler just to ensure that it's going to, uh, you know, keep a charge and everything, especially because mm -hmm. a lot of times for work I have to travel, 
and mm-hmm. I may not get home for you know a week or two. And say, I, I like to have all my machines cranked up once a week. That's a personal goal. But mm-hmm. with travel and, and other just life, you're not always mm-hmm. to get that. Sometimes that runs out of the batteries. So mm-hmm. sometimes I just keep the battery charger on the wheeler so I, I can get around the property. So. Mm. Um, which could, can you tell us which one you got? I don't know. Yeah. You know. So I have a, a Polaris 500 Sportsman HO, 500 okay. HO. Okay. So and I love it. It's a great machine. It you know it's a little older, but I mean it has all the power I need. Uh, it's it's great on the trails. You know it's great around the property, just moving things. I I use it quite often. It you know a lot of people say that's a toy, but it's really a tool. You know, mm-hmm. I need it to, to get around and, you know, mm-hmm. be on my link. Yeah. I think Pelora... Did she get uh, going? D- yeah, did she get jumped? Somebody, uh, yes. And then, so I called in, and I apologize for interrupting, but uh, her t- battery terminal is only a positive, and then the neutral negative is hidden somewhere. So uh, they had to clamp to something. They got yeah. it working. Nonetheless, yeah. they got it working. So she's coming home. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling we'll be buying a new battery tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, you know, that's, it's Florida, man. That's, you know. It's part of owning cars. Hey, you know yeah, what's funny? Yep. She just paid it off, uh, like two weeks ago. Finally got her car paid off. So now, <laughs> oh, sweet. now it's going to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what? I think you need to buy her a brand new car, Patrick. Uh-huh. <laughs> We've talked about it. We've talked about it. And she's like, Marley, you know, Marley's the saver in the relationship. I'm obviously the spender. Uh, well, she's like, I don't want to have a car loan over my this, head. This I want to. This mm-hmm. This is still not a good time to buy. So no, 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 no. We're not going to be no. buying for a couple of years for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. If anything, it's a good time to sell. But I, I mean, if you sell a car, where are you going to get another one from? That's that's yeah, like yeah. people telling us it's a good time to sell your house. It's like, well, where the hell am I going to go live? I got to live somewhere. Where? You can live on Jordan's property. Come on. <laughs> we'll camp out up there. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. You can you can you can move out in the country and buy twenty acres in the woods like my dad did and live in the oh. middle of freaking nowhere. But, in a swamp, uh, in the middle of a swamp. Yes. Nobody, every, everybody can't do that. I no. mean, the human, no. the most humans got to be next to other humans, or they go nuts. Yes. yes. So, um, uh, some of us prefer not being around too many people. Well, but yes, I understand. I understand. I understand it's what hard you're to saying. do. It's hard to do a business out. We wouldn't be able to keep the Who Move My Freedom podcast going without the support of great companies like High Point Firearms and Full Forge Gear, bags and gear for everyday life. Did you know High Point is an American family owned and operated company located in Ohio with over 30 years of manufacturing experience? High Point is proud to be the home of the working man's gun and your source for affordable handguns and carbines with a lifetime warranty. So when you're in the market, please consider High Point. So a couple of things here. Um, let me see. Hold on. I'll, I'll try to get to who is this? Gen Champ Jr. says, what battery has a hidden negative terminal lame sauce? That's That's, it. that's what, common. So, that's so common now. That's what she said. I'm going to take a peek when she comes out or probably yeah, tomorrow morning. Good. Yeah. My uh, my That's Ford Transit, my Ford Transit doesn't have it either. But there's something. If you look inside the engine, there's a place that they indicate. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you put it here. Yeah, yeah. Got it's, it. it's, it's it's common. Well, on a lot of. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're better attaching the the ground cable to the a point on the engine itself. Um, yeah. But <laughs> if you can't, you know get what? The, if it, she's up and running, she's coming home. We'll deal with it. I'll deal yeah, with it yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's okay. off work for the next like three or four days, so we got time to deal with it. Oh yeah, yeah. you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. It ha- it does happen though. So let's we'll say perfect timing then. Yeah. <sighs> Always how it goes. Pay off the <laughs> yeah. car. Time for the battery. Uh, Listen, don't don't. don't I was just in that. Time. I was just in that Ford dealership over there by you, Patrick, and they had like a Mustang in there that was one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Oh, you, you know, I was riding home from my dad's, and I'm coming to, in the in the Crystal River, and the Ford dealership where my dad, dad bought his truck used. They had a Bronco out there, and it had a sixty nine thousand dollars price tag on it. On a I said, I said, you know, Bronco had, had they they've had engine problems. That engine they're dropping engine like, sub thousand miles on some of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like that little piece of sixty nine thousand. It looks like a. It's like the size of a of a. Was it a two door Bronco? Was it the two door Bronco? I don't care if it was a twelve door Bronco. <laughs> he doesn't know. It doesn't matter. Sixty nine thousand dollars for it. I mean. Okay. Have you guys have you ever heard of inflation? 
Look, I'm waiting for that Ineos vehicle, right? The the one that mm-hmm. looks like a Defender. Uh huh. You know, and if that is seventy five thousand, which it probably will be. Okay. And I'm thinking, and it's the way you want it. And it's the way I mm-hmm. want it. Versus some car that you're going to get for sixty nine thousand that you got to make it the way you want it. Spend another mm-hmm. twenty or thirty thousand dollars on it. It's mm-hmm. like you're not wrong with this line of thought here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, hopefully, you don't have any warranty things you have to do. I don't know who's going to warranty the stuff. What deal is there? A dealership over here that's they're, gonna? They're work. They're working on all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know. But okay. yes, I'm sixty nine grand for a, for, a, no, 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 no forest, no run forest, run. You know, yeah. it's like Especially there's no way. Especially the issues are happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prices are going to be high. Flying Rich wants to know when the Cybertruck is coming in. Um, I think in about a year or so, I hear. We'll be getting cyber trucks. I think that Tesla is uh, ordering the parts and stuff like that to build it right now. So it takes a long time to start making a vehicle from scratch. Sorry. Yeah, it takes yeah, a absolutely. Lot of... It takes a long time. Um, I, that's one of those things that you don't don't think about. But I, I've always been curious. In somehow this has turned into from gun gun talk and legal talk. Into right. Car <laughs> we'll get to um, gun stuff. We'll yeah. get back to that. But yeah. I, I've always been curious. The process of it seems like. Big companies like Ford are just constantly having to, I would imagine, constantly having to retool for, you, okay. you build for what, six years, eight years, and then you redesign and no. retool, and you have, and throughout Accurate. the lifespan of the vehicle, you're changing stuff. It seems like back it's never in, ending. Back mm-hmm. in the old days, back in the old days, back in the mm-hmm. 70s, 60s, even 80s, not so much with trucks, but every year the cars were different. Every There was never two years in a row where the car was the same, so it was a constant... <laughs> You know, when the, when the new car comes out in 1981, they're already working on the 82 model. How? how yeah, but it wasn't. It, but it wasn't a complete. But it wasn't a completely new. It wasn't a completely new vehicle. Well, they were the they were stuff, upgrading certain things. Yeah. Well, no, but the, some of the some of the frame stuff and that was the same. But bodies mm-hmm. and interiors completely different. I yeah. mean, not even. I mean, I mean the mean, average like, the, to to build a car from scratch to build any car from scratch on average is about five billion dollars. Wow. Well, that's what it costs that's, to develop. That's an insane. So, amount. so but now, like nowadays, what they're doing, I, I and I agree with Walter. Maybe in the '80s, it might have been a little different, or a long time ago, it was cheaper and all that to develop, and it was also less rules. But now it's so many rules that they really build. Uh, any company might have like two or three underbodies. They don't like everything right now, else on the car is changeable. In California. Yeah, they've been well, building mo- for California a lot. For a while. Of, I, I did some some reading on that the other day. A lot of companies are just building for the California market because mm-hmm. of I, I don't know why they the bother. The laws there. Yeah, I forget really California. Don't they don't need new cars. They should be like I mean, as a, as <laughs> they should have cars as from a, the fifties. Like <laughs> as, as I don't gun care gun if California gets new cars, man. <laughs> as a gun maker, I'm not making stuff just for California. Sorry, I'm not yeah. gonna do it. Yeah, I know it I sucks. Mean, I mean, some of the other peoples do, and they and they cater their market for California, mm-hmm. but I, I no. Yeah, it's tough to develop a new car like Chevy developing that C8 Corvette. A lot Pretty went cool. into that. I still want one. Yeah, a lot went well, into yeah, that. Well, yeah, of course it, it takes a lot, but you know. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm on board. I, I would build, like to have one of those. Yeah, you got to build things that people want too. It's not, you know, don't get sidetracked with all this trendy stuff i was riding around coming home or, or this morning i was going someplace and i'm in traffic and i'm seeing these suv type vehicles and they all look look the alike <laughs> they yeah, all they do. those <laughs> high, <laughs> high ass the, the hatchback the high ass end the, yeah. it, 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 the, and that's what the the guys that were doing the ineos um the grenadier he's like the guys started the company he's like everything looks the same I can't Everybody, tell a Toyota pickup truck from a Ford from a Hyundai, or from a from Chevy. A nope, I can't tell. Right. Can't, yeah, I can't tell the just, difference. And I'm a they, car they, dude. They, I used to be able to tell cars from the shadow. I, <laughs> I, I the, the new the new Toyota trucks in the front, I think, are so effing ugly. I can't even I, my opinion. Oh my god! Just, I, I kind of think they copied GMC a little bit. Well, they're they're right, they're Toyota's they're yes. They're Toyota's the, a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Toyotas are getting more. It's weird. You used to be able to tell the difference between a Toyota and like a Ford or or a GM truck. You can't now. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And then, have you yeah. seen like the stupid Hitler mustaches that BMW is putting on? 
Have you I guys mean, seen that? What I like is all the, the Toyotas now. The, the Toyotas are Honda. And it looks like the eyes are mm -hmm. crying in the back. They got this like <laughs> thing coming down the side of the. Uh -huh. And it's like I said, there's an, like my wife said, there's another crying uh, Honda. And it's like. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. And, and probably no one believes me out there, but if you look at, there's all kinds of memes out there about the Hitler stash in um, in in BMW. See, like right here, here's a here's a like well, that's, the. That's a, that's God a damn it, I can see it. Yeah. But that's a that's a trademark for BMW front ends that have that grill like the that. kidney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 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 they. I'm gonna try to find like a serious one for you guys to see because these are all themes. But BMW grills now are so insane. That it's like what 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 do we what what's happening with the you know with that kidney grill well, that they're doing? Oh, here we go. Here's a you, here's a perfect example. Why the hell? What what's up with this? Oh man, that's what just... what what is what's happening here? <laughs> well, okay, okay, that's a prime example. You look at that BMW <laughs> and you look at a Jaguar and you look at a and a Hyundai. A lot of times, this car, they all look the same because one's copying the other. Not the, the Koreans are definitely knocking off all the other designs um, because, you know, you can't if you can't afford a Jaguar, you want a freaking Hyundai that looks like a Jaguar. I mean, so, look at this beautiful car that they messed up with this ugly-ass grill. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Everything else I like about that car, man, it's a two-door. Like a, a real car like should be a two-door. But I don't head, like, what's, up with these, what's up with these... Uh, uh, like chopstick uh, on the front there. You got the big grill and you got these uh, big. Oh, like, those are air air intakes or something. Yeah, I know, but they're like not, they're like they're, yeah, they're, they're not. Yeah, they're not even all real. They're not even all real. Things are getting crazy. Okay, so listen, we're actually in the Gorn section, so we should show right. off some guns here, and then we're gonna get back to talking about this like some some gun stuff here with Jordan since we have him. Jordan's yeah, like, definitely, definitely. I should have known this was gonna happen to me coming on the show. Um, so yeah, <laughs> what guns do you guys have? Let's see. Let's see some guns. Who wants so to I, go? Okay, Babyface going first. After our miserable experience yesterday, I decided to gut the bullpup and uh, make it into something that looks and may shoot more well. useful. More useful? Maybe, maybe. We'll see. It feels just like a Glock. Uh, I'm very impressed with how the 3D printing turned out. So yeah, none of this is uh, none of this is Glock. None of this is. So that's that's well, yeah. is that a that's a Glock. That's or that's a Glock Glock? It's a yeah. This is a technically a thirty four type of non Glock, but yeah, no, it's uh, completely three D printed on the bottom. It does take some fitting. I had to do obviously mm -hmm. like anything. I had to sit down and kind of file in some pieces. So mm -hmm. and there's still a little bit more to perfect it, but uh, do it. it locks back. Yes. Okay. Slide. And how about how, how does it drop the mag? How does it drop? Do you have a mag? Oh, drops free. That's good. You know, my right favorite. The bottom, so. My favorite thing. Yeah, go ahead and do that again. For, but my favorite thing about it is the stippling that's three D printed. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> the crazy thing. Is this this like hex? Yeah. This look hex at that pattern that's in it. Oh, is cool. printed. It's just printed into the frame. I I didn't do any of that, which is pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's um, cool. So yeah, really, really cool. Uh, the files. If anybody wants to do their own, can be found on JSD Supplies websites. Okay. Uh, they have it. I had to yeah. go kind of dig in for it, but they are listed there, so you can grab okay. the files. Big shout out cool. to JSD. Look at look at Jordan with like a whole case. Look at Jordan. Oh my Jordan. God! I just Seriously, Jordan. What? What I think is he just, this? He just took a broom out of there. Oh no! It's a. I. Shotgun. That's a, what a break <laughs> action. What a break. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So this gun <laughs> is not impressive. This gun isn't worth a whole lot of money, but this gun means the world to me. Um, it is a, it's an H and R Topper Model Forty Eight. It's a single shot, twelve gauge shotgun. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's got a full choke. You know, you very fud gun, right? A lot of people would say, but this gun was my grandpa's. And mm -hmm. uh, he passed away last year, and you know, but now it's mine, and I have a, a few more of his, and uh, it means the world to me that I have this gun, and you know, it's just say that again just, because you broke up there for a second. Did you say that was your whose gun was that? It, it was my grandpa's, and he grandpa's. passed away last year. Oh, okay, but, uh, sorry I, to hear that. And I have a few more of his, but mm -hmm. you know, 
you know, when we shoot skeet or whatever, I look, you know, for special occasion, I like to pull it out and, mm-hmm. and, you know, pop a play or two, but you know, it's not worth much, but you know, this and the other guns that I got from him, you know, just mean the world to me. And, um, you know, it's just that sentimental value for me. is just off the charts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure well, your your yeah. grandpa's looking down, glad that you know that those guns have passed on to you, man. And his grand his great grandkids will be getting them soon. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Walt. On my Jordan, on my 18th birthday, this was a couple years ago. On my 18th <laughs> birthday, I went out to a local Kmart back then and bought an H and R topper, kind of uh, just like that. And I went home, stuck that barrel in the lathe, cut that thing down to 18 and a 18 and change it was all legal i didn't didn't make it mm-hmm. you know but i had to do that you know mm-hmm. boy that gun kicked like a mule <laughs> <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> yeah but that was a barrel for a it has a little bit of a uh, recoil pad on it oh uh, let's see well <laughs> yeah go to, go to the center uh, yeah uh go the other way other way other way there you go yeah there you go boom mine didn't mine didn't have no recoil no recoil yeah. battle on mine. <laughs> it kicks a little bit. I wouldn't give this to a you know a first time shooter, but it's not mm-hmm. bad. So mm-hmm. no, but, no. Yeah. Who? No, uh, believe it or what, not, the, mm-hmm. those H and R guns are, are are worth more than you think right now because there's yeah. nobody making those guns like that. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Who was it? I think H and R. What part? Who did H and R go to? Palmetto oh, State has that. Uh, Palmetto State Armory. Yes. So we will, we probably will get some H and R guns in the future, but then the old see. ones, the old ones are going to become more collectible. So there you go. Not that. So obviously, um, obviously, Topper's, Jordan's never selling those. <laughs> topper, the topper no. is what the revolver of the shotgun world. They're the simplest little machines that just they will work forever. Mm-hmm. You can't break yeah. one of those things. Yeah, nope. Asper Warrior says that shotgun will work as well today as when Grandpa bought it. And it will absolutely. work just as well when your grandkids inherit it. There you go. Uh huh. Hundred percent. So yes, absolutely. Uh, Walt, what do you what do you what do you got here? Is Walt well, yesterday I, I brought out the bag of striker fired pistols, and one of them is the FMK. And the FMK, uh, a lot of people hate it, and a lot of people like them. This one here I bought right in the middle of the good old pandemic that we were having there, mm-hmm. and this thing has not not worked once. So really, every time I this thing runs pow 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 okay that was huh. kind of boring yeah mm-hmm. so and it was yeah. only like 215 215 dollars when i bought it yeah. so mm-hmm. um i so i think we got to qualify that a little bit i think you know What's that? for normal people out there they expect the guns to work but we are talking about walter who literally <laughs> will put some ammunition from the night Four. from 1936 right. Egypt. Four sweepings. <laughs> all, all you ammunition princesses out there, they got to have brand new ammo. Or, you know, you're scared of it. I'm scared of it. You know, I've shot stuff. I've shot stuff from the World War One vintage stuff. Okay. If it's okay. been stored properly, guess what? It goes bang. It'll last for I mean, I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to turn down stuff from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. It all goes bang. And I believe me, I think you've shot a lot of my ammo, that my old ammo, by the way. <laughs> yes, I have. So what are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. Listen, is that, am I making it up, man? You put some old ass ammo. I, I in found guns. stuff. I found stuff on the ground at Hanks that's been laying out in the rain and, <laughs> and everything. I pick it up, I look at it, I shake it, I can hear the powder inside. Boom! And it <laughs> fires perfectly. Yeah. I don't know how the hell you hear the powder inside, but you can't hear anything else. <laughs> it's selective hearing. It's yeah, selective exactly. Hearing. <laughs> exactly. I was trying to, Walter was shooting the 50. I'm like, Walt, can you just hold on a second? I'm trying to get the camera set up. Boom! No, n- no, nothing recorded. Well, another round. Boom! Yeah. Another round. Boom! <laughs> So I don't have anything. So you guys are gonna have. Lola was supposed to bring me a gun. So I don't have any guns to show off because Lola completely forgot about me. And let's see what else you got there, Walt. What's this? This is that that Turkish uh, 1911 in nine millimeter. Um, that's you, the new did one. Did you get a chance new. to try it? Yes, I shot it. Hank shot it. Uh, yeah. How how was it? How did it work? Uh, I mean, 
pretty hard not to work on one of those things. Yeah, I mean, it worked. <laughs> Whatever yeah. old nonsense Walter was putting in there was good. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, that, that, yeah. Had, that had PMC ammo you were running in. Brand oh, new okay, PMC fine. Yeah. yeah, how come I didn't get some of the old Egyptian ammo? Because it will blow the gun up. made for machine yeah. guns. It's not made yes. for stuff. Yeah, Walter's yes. ammo is literally wrapped in gauze like a mummy. <laughs> you know? No, that thing works pretty good. It actually... No, it shot's fine, yeah. Yeah, the finish... What was the one that you... Was that a different 1911 or that one that had that kind of... It's kind of oh, like a greenish the, finish. That's the 45 one that Patrick's going to fix the side on for me. It is oh. in a box. Uh, it will be prepared for you next time. I'm just going to hand fit the, cut, the parts. And it will be perfect, ready to yeah. go. Maybe. Yeah. Hurry up, Mo. Forty-two it, chill it says, will. "Blame it on poor Lola." Yes, Lola just was. <laughs> before we started, Lola told me, "Oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'll get you something," and then never came back. So there you go. <laughs> when, once I'm do, once I'm doing the show, Lola knows I'm trapped in here. <laughs> um, He's like, "Yeah, hey, okay. You, what, what are you gonna do about it? Except, what can I do except complain?" Yeah, 42, yeah. chilled, 40, 40, 42 chilled in the chat just mentioned paper shotgun shells. Mm -hmm. Let me dig around. I do have some paper shotgun shells. Do you shells. really? Oh, my God. I, I haven't fired any of these ones, but I would not get in front of it. I would just, just I'll qualify that. I don't get in front of no old ammo. So um, <laughs> I don't want to get in front of old, new, <laughs> my, my, middle age. My favorite are the, uh, the old brass, oh. old brass shotgun shells. Yeah. Super cool. Okay, yeah. so other than Walter... Do, Jordan, do well, you have something else to show off to us? Come on, let's see. Yeah. Um, I, I can make a quick trip down to the bunker and, and uh, find something. Uh, I'll cool. be back. Okay, all right. There you go. Jordan's going to get something. We'll Babyface, it all falls on you. It all falls on you, Patrick. I decided to go back to the old school. Look at that. Uh, you know, you, on, yeah. on this, I had the, the Zinitco handguard and a different upper for a while. I finally, over the weekend, I was like, you know what? No. I want to go back to wood. It needs the Man, wood again. The, the laminate the wood, you can't beat that on a crank. Sorry. It looks so good, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so, just over this weekend, you saw all this other wood on AKs and then you decided to go back? No, no, no. Um, I was watching a video on Friday. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what video it was. I was watching some video. Oh, no, that's what it was. I bought a, um, I bought a, a Bison parts kit. Uh, over the weekend, uh, before the weekend, on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, what? What? The Chitin Defense, I think Chitin Defense or Chitin Defense. He's a real making one? them. Yeah, a brand new. He's making the parts kits here uh, in the U.S. Oh. Uh, so he, I bought a parts kit from him. It's one of those things, Walter. This is like the strike. Um, I bought a receiver. I gave him the money for a receiver for the for the Bison like three years ago, and yeah. I've still not seen it. And he's having yeah. trouble sourcing them. Mm. Um, but he is machining the entire part set, barrels, everything. What uh, about and the Bison magazine? What's he doing for you, that? Uh, making them. He has a company producing them. Uh, he has, it, interestingly enough, I don't even he has, know. With Arms List, you can shop the extensive list of local and nationwide firearms classified. Now with more confidence because of their built-in firewall. For only six ninety-nine a month for personal use or $30 a month for business vendors. So when you're in the market, please consider Arms List. We wouldn't be able to keep the Who Move My Freedom podcast going without the support of great companies like Arms List. So as bison, I, as bison, I was saying. Yeah, Bison Armory or no? What no, no, it's to? a Bison. It's a PP-19 Bison. PP-19, no. okay. Yeah, it's, no, a, it's actually... a, a Russian submachine gun from the late 80s, early 80s. Um, so anyways, uh, I've been waiting on a receiver from him, and I have always said that when the receiver gets shipped, I'll go ahead and buy a parts kit because he was making them. And just for shits and giggles on Friday, I was like, hey, uh, when he, when's the next set of parts kits coming out? When are you going to finish there's a good picture right there you just passed up mm -hmm. um yeah. when are you gonna do another run of parts kits that, and i'll go ahead and put that's my money tiny down. what it's a it's a nine mil submachine gun with a helical magazine oh, so the magazine spirals oh yeah um and he oh, was like cool. well i just so happen to have a parts kit with your name on it if you want it and i said well hell yeah send it my way how much uh, uh 950 oh, was that's not the, bad. If, it was the run number two i think he's already done Two. Uh, he's done two runs. This must have been run number three. Yeah. Um, and you... then you know, I think it was two fifty for the receiver. Uh, that might be early adopter pricing. I I don't want to you know hold him to that. Yeah. But um, yeah. So hopefully this week I'll have a parts kit sitting in the hand in my hands, 
and uh, maybe in the next year he'll send out a receiver and I can do a video on building it. So. But looking at wood handguards, I was like, man, I got to go back to the wood hand. Mm, very cool. All right, we got Jordan. Jordan's here. What do you got, Jordan? So, so I say I like all the guns, right? So mm -hmm. I got the shotgun. This is this is the gun that I think my brother-in-law was impressed with. It's a, a Colt 6960, I believe. Mm. You know, it's got the the fancy rail and it's, it's got the flashlight and and all the the get the gadgets and everything. The the dot magnifier. So this is kind of my latest and greatest AR. Um, I like this gun a lot. So yeah. it's it's a lot of fun. Look at you. So yeah. is that a is that a recent Colt? Oh, did I? Uh... I know Colt's not what. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we lo I lost hey, you guys for there for a second there. <laughs> no idea what's happened there. Yeah, I, I was saying, is that a recent Colt? Yeah, I, it, it is. Um, I know Colt isn't what it used to be, but mm -hmm. I'm impressed with this, and I, I like it, and it, it does what I need to do. So, mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. Isn't fresh my memory here? Isn't Colt owned by CZ now? Yeah, they bought yeah. him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is not oh, a bad it'll, it'll be. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, a good thing, thing actually. No. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. No. Um, we were talking paper shotgun shells, right? Oh, boy. Look at the old little cigar the box they're sitting in, too. That's really cool. Tape. Interesting. It's taped, it's taped together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wow. these are all double up buck. All but, like Peter's and double up buck, which mm. I'm gonna, we're going to have to do a yeah. video. Walter has one of every kind of ammo, probably. Where did Jordan <laughs> go? I was just about to say, what is the? Um, what's He's got to run down to the to the, the secret he, base. Oh, did he go? Did guy. he go back down to the? Okay, he went back so. down to. The, yeah, there what's everyone using in service? Is it a sixty nine twenty? I think a sixty nine twenty is what everyone's using. That, right? That's what I. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, um, and the army hasn't switched that, right? It's okay. a M four. So uh, no, I, I had a I had a sixty nine sixty. Excuse me, that that was the model number sixty nine sixty. I think that. Bill, the big difference for that one is just the rail. It's just mm -hmm. a Centurion rail. Okay. So yeah, it's got the lock and everything. So. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It's a nice looking gun. Yeah. I'm looking at pictures Thank of it. You. Yeah. Good looking gun. No, it looks good in what Jordan just showed us there. It looks pretty good. I think it, it looked like it had a decent, you know, pretty good finish on it. So. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, we have yeah, to it's... we you know we have to put it out in the rain, Jordan. And see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to see if it'll rust, right? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, next time when you, I don't think, Jordan, you've never actually been on the Hacienda shooting. You haven't done that yet. We got to, yeah. I need us to get down there. We yeah. need to exchange. You need to come up. I need to come down. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. We should do what an the, official kind of GOA thing, you know? What part of North oh. Carolina did you say you were in? Yeah. Uh, I live uh, in, uh, I'm showing off all my guns and telling people where I live. Yeah. That's wonderful. Rough area, uh, rough area. Rough yeah. area, western yeah, North yeah. Carolina <laughs> in the mountains. Uh, central North Carolina. Central. Got it. Central, okay. Central, some, uh, central North Carolina in the southern part. We have some property just outside of Franklin, um, mm. over okay. in the mountain area. Yeah. Yeah. I love the mountains. Uh, yeah. Anywhere. Listen, uh, Jordan is concerned with OPSEC right now. <laughs> you, as he should be. <laughs> Do not come to my house uninvited. It would not no. be welcome. No, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, go, let's, so hold on one second. Brian Quick said, did you all hear about Hunter Biden's phone hacked by 4chan? No, I didn't hear that. No. 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 It wasn't... No. They say hacked. It wasn't hacked. Mm -hmm. Part... Part of the backup of the of his laptop had a complete backup of his phone um, because that's how Macs work. You back up your phone to your laptop uh, mm -hmm. in the olden days, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so that that block of data has been sitting there since the the laptop got released. Uh. Um, the problem was that his phone backup had a iCloud lock on it. So you couldn't just install it to a burner phone and look through it. It okay. was locked. Mm -hmm. Somehow, somebody figured out what the password is and uh, opened That's not easy with office. iCloud, I, man. I, I, iCloud is ridiculously impossible to do. Can I, can I tell you who figured it out? 
Can I tell you who figured it out? Probably. Who do you think? I. I... It, pro- it becomes. It starts with an I and ends with an L. <laughs> I could see foreign countries doing things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Personally, um, but uh, that's what that's so, the ones that when they who was it that was starts with an I and ends with an L. Israel. Oh, they, Israel. They yeah. they. Um, they crack somebody else's the iPhone thing. I remember the, what that, okay, what that so, story was about, but yeah. Oh, Let me yeah, throw that's this true. out there. For, for anybody that doesn't know, I'll, I'll give you guys a primer on the software. Software. One, it's not even a software. It's a hack that an Israeli company has come out with, uh, basically using what's called day zero vulnerability. So stuff that is still unpatched on modern iPhones that Apple isn't even aware of. Um, this company basically sells to the highest bidder this package, the software suite, where you can hack anybody's device. It's really simple. It It is so simple that um, they actually, depending on the device, can send you a text message with a string of code in it. You don't even have to open the text, and it will start the process of hacking the phone, and then at a later date, finishes the process and by that point you have complete control over somebody's Holy device moly. it's the way that um Khashoggi, that guy the the the, mm-hmm. the Turkish reporter journalist or mm-hmm. yeah that guy whatever he was uh it's how he was followed the the turkish government had his phone hacked using this israeli software and knew what he was doing basically it gives you a one to it's amazing so it, it's ridiculously scary uh but it gives yeah. you a one-to-one of what's happening on the phone as it's happening it's not mm. like and they, I, I think they ground him up and put him down the drain they did they cut him into little pieces um mm, but yeah. the israeli this israeli <laughs> company sells it to whoever whoever's got the multi-billion dollars to buy it they have no scruples about who they sell to so <laughs> walter is that. not wrong this is absolutely fact mm. but <laughs> on the why, other would side mis- why would i mislead you guys come on <laughs> hunter biden's phone has some very interesting things on it text messages his uh he in his and phone probably he would... contact information for a lot of very interesting people mm-hmm. that oh, certain people would you, love to, to blackmail and things like that yeah mind mm-hmm. you when you do a backup of, a, of an iphone you get email backed up you get your uh text messages back all your i messages backed up you get everything backed up photos um and joe biden on his phone was listed as Pedo Pete. That's the name that he has for his father on his cell phone. Pedo oh. Pete. Yeah, I saw I'm Asper. Not kidding. I saw Asper Warrior saying that in the chat, and I was like, okay. Um, I'm not that's, even gonna. That's what Hunter called his father, according to his contact in the phone. Probably all all his Ukrainian contacts are in that phone too. Um, trust me, there's more that. People don't do this stuff just to see naked pictures of Biden mm-hmm. Hunter. No, they, no, no, no. <laughs> so what's the they, odds you think that something's going to come out of that? Because I think at the end nothing's nothing. going to come out of it. Yeah. Nothing will come out of it. Yeah, nothing. yeah. Nothing. yeah, nothing's going to come out of it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's uh, let's switch gears here a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. Let's find out from Jordan what things are on GOA's radar that we yeah, need to be talking, talking about. Other than Hunter's phone. So, I don't know what GOA knows about Hunter's phone and, and, and any of those activities, but uh, <laughs> what's so going something on? Something that, that I, I just saw today, even though I think it went to effect the first of the month, and mm-hmm. this is for North Carolina. Sorry, I'm biased. Mm-hmm. But I we just got our reciprocity restored with Nevada. Okay. Um, I, we lost it in 2020. But now it has been restored. So now if you have a North Carolina carry permit, you can now carry again in in Nevada. Obviously, that's a big tourist destination for some folks. Okay. Um, you know, so in, you can carry. So that, that just happened. How long, was, how long was that an issue? Was that been for the last couple of years or something like that? Yeah, I think, okay. I think we lost it in 2020, uh, and, we, and it just got back as of the first of this month. Yeah. So, um, hey, see- we we'll take all the wins we can get it. Absolutely, get it. I seem to remember they were trying to take it from Florida as well, but that didn't work out, right? It looks like we still have reciprocity. Yeah, Florida still had it. Yeah, but um, 
yeah. stuff is all confusing because mm -hmm. just because you have it here and you have certain things here, you don't have certain things in other places, even though you have mm -hmm. reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here in Florida, you, every, everything's a weapon. You can carry any, you can carry a flamethrower in your pocket if you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go to another state, uh, you can't have that. You can't have that butcher knife or that, or that, whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Everything's not the same. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing. Yeah. It is. I would agree with that. It is. It is confusing. It's good that it's back. What's the reason that it's back, Jordan? Just something changed in the law. What was? What's the? You know, um, I, I think our our friends at Grassroots North Carolina were were really working hard on this, mm -hmm. um, and and they fought for it, and, and they helped get get it restored. So this has been so. Um, New. I don't think I have all the details yet because I just found about this today. So, oh, cool. um, you know, but big props to Grassroots North Carolina. We worked very closely with them. In fact, uh, just a couple weeks ago, we were. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. Yeah, I think but, there's there's a release. I'm just throwing that up there yeah. for folks to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, we uh, protested Tom Tillis outside of his office in Raleigh and. Uh, mm. Uh, Stephen uh -huh. Williford, who's with GOA now, who was the uh, guardian of, of Sutherland Springs, and our North Carolina director, Andy Stevens, were, were you know in Raleigh outside of Tom Tillis's office, you know, essentially calling him out for his sellout on, on gun control. Mm -hmm. and, and that protest was put together by Grassroots North Carolina, and, and they're just a, a fantastic group. So, Okay. Very cool. I think, you know, obviously... We need to have more of that stuff happening because we have lots of, uh, we've got lots of rhinos out there selling out people's rights right now. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing to see that, you know, it, I, I never, I didn't think it was this bad. It's like, um, you know, all bets are off or something like that in the last couple of years with these guys. And, you know, as, as a North Carolinian, I'm really disgusted by Tom Tillis because mm -hmm. many gun owners didn't don't like Tom Tillis, just generally. Mm -hmm. But you know, in talking with people, many people voted for Tom Tillis and held their nose while they did it because they were thinking of the Supreme Court and and other issues like that. But they did not vote for Tom Tillis to mm -hmm. sell them out on gun control. That was mm -hmm. not their. Um, that's not why they did it. They, they mm -hmm. voted for him to. Uh, protect their rights to be a champion for the Second Amendment, and that's not what he's done. He he said, "No, I'm going to sell you out because I think it's going to help me look better, you know, mm -hmm. or or I want to appeal more, more mainstream." But you know, when it comes to the Second Amendment, our rights aren't up for negotiation, and you know, it's it's truly eye opening, you know, uh, to to see just how quickly they can turn around and sell us out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me get this in here real quick before we move on. Um, by the way, Patrick and Walter are collaborators on this video here at Utreon. So anything that you guys give, each one of them gets 33% of it shared with me. So that being said, Armin and Axes gave us five bucks. He says, tell Jordan I said hello. I could just text him, laugh out loud. Just good to see him here. Also, uh... WW1 Cordite Ammo Walt. So there you go. Uh, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm an equal operator. I believe in uh, you know I, I like our my senior ammo. It doesn't, doesn't yeah. scare me. No. <laughs> it's got cordite in it. I'll pull the trigger. Don't bother me. Well, just, yeah. Oh, you got to. I got to remember about the old old ammo. It's all corrosive. Yeah. So American stuff. It doesn't make any difference. All corrosive. So clean your gun afterwards. Yeah. As long as the case, as long as the cases aren't crusty and and rotten. You know, if the cases are clean, rock and roll. Yeah, so. if you see ghosts coming out of the ammo, you know, <laughs> that, at some point. Well, who are you going to call then? <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yeah. So listen, to get back to to get back to GOA here, I, I would think right now GOA offices are like staying busy and running overtime. Even though we had some positive news uh, come out from the Supreme Court, it seems like there's all these states just making up even crazier laws now um you know what what's your opinion of that and you know what's joa's opinion of that jordan well so obviously we have had a very good you know supreme court decision uh with bruin and um 
but now we're seeing states, and you know the usual suspects like uh, you know New York, um, who are trying to make it even harder to carry a, a firearm, even though that's what the Supreme Court said you have to allow them to do. So they're they're jumping through all the hoops, and they're um, uh, having all these gun-free zones and all these atrocious laws, which just is the opposite of what the Supreme Court said said to do. And um, you know, it's almost like how we've seen Second Amendment sanctuaries or or uh, stuff like that pop up around the, the country in, in more pro-gun places. Well, it's almost like it's a gun control sanctuary in in these other places. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it's you know, places like New York are just really uh, and the the laws that are, are you know being passed are really just on the face of the second amendment it's it's the opposite of what the intent was and yeah. even when we have such a great strong clear ruling that they, they, they just don't care mm-hmm. so um yeah i guess it will just be more lawsuits and more challenges going forward yeah i mean i think we all kind of knew it was gonna <clears throat> it was gonna come to this you know obviously i think we all celebrated the supreme court's decision <laughs> You know, Walter's making uh, air quotes now that uh, he he predicted That's this. What I was saying, yeah, I think a lot of us. I think even GOA would have predicted this. How oh, long? Yeah. How long can this go? How long can these guys actually stall this stuff? And what's the next move? So the the Supreme Court comes out with this decision should be the law of the land. Then the states start layering uh, things on top of that. How long can this ping pong game go on? You know, that is a really interesting question, and maybe the explanation is longer than the time we have left. But, um, you know, it's the whole thing with even the Bruin case is like the the decision that came down was like it wasn't anything revolutionary. It, it told gun owners what we already knew, and that's you had a right to defend yourself in public. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. We started off the, the show talking about your inherent God-given right to defend yourself that right. we see in nature, you know, that we see, you know, you don't get in between a mama bear and her cubs, right? Because she's going to protect her cubs, right? right? And that same inherent right of self-defense applies to humans. You know, I mm-hmm. say it comes from, comes from God. And, you know, that goes about as you – that applies to how you are out of, about in public and, um, you know – so the Supreme Court just set a very basic principle that has been, you know, in common law since, you know, since, you know, I, since God created the world, in my opinion, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so it's it's, it's just going to come down to. Um, We've got a minute, but we'll we'll answer this question as we go over okay. into the next segment. Go ahead, Jordan. You know, well, really, I think what it comes down to is we we need to start having better pe- better people in office, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, and we need to vote uh, and vote re- responsibly. Um, and and I, I get it. You know, mm-hmm. there's areas that it's very difficult for pro gunners to to get elected. But mm-hmm. you know, that's where the accountability needs to come from. Um, is better elected officials, better statesmen. You know, we need. Uh, you know, perhaps we need some some elected officials who aren't dancing on the internet, um, but you know, who actually know what they were doing about the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's it's really shameful that the these states this is this is their answer to this. You know, like hey, we're just going to make it worse for the people who live in our states. We're going to take a break. We're going to come right back. We wouldn't be able to keep the Who Moved My Freedom podcast going without the support of a DAO or decentralized autonomous organization like Tusk Crypto. Tusk Cryptocurrency is a firearm-friendly e-commerce option for online payment transactions secured on the blockchain. So when you're in the crypto market, please consider Tusk, T-U-S-C. Yeah, I think the big question that folks want to know out there, you know, let's say the folks who are in New York, the people who are in, uh, let me see, states affected by this kind of stuff. I'm going to say Delaware, for example, where you can't, it, it is a little bit easier to get a CCW, but you have to jump through some ridiculous hoops. Like you have to publish in your local newspaper your intention to get a CCW and all that. Uh, Maryland has some crazy, in New Jersey, you know, it's not an easy place to do it. Here, There's lots of people around the country, because I think it was nine states, 
that that yeah. um that this really affected that had these we may if we freaking feel like it issue laws i think really the question everyone wants to know like when the hell do these people actually get relief how long are they going to be denied their second amendment rights well i think we have seen some at least to a degree in some states some compliance with the law i think maryland you know uh if i am correct i could be wrong uh it it's be, is complying with the issue um, and essentially becoming shell issue because essentially what the rulings you know did is striking down may issue jurisdictions um in, in you know so they would have to be essentially shall issue mm-hmm. um so you know it's we're just gonna have to keep holding them accountable because they're gonna, you know the anti-gun gunners are going to weasel their way out of doing this because they don't want us carrying guns they don't mm-hmm. want us owning guns that they want to have the monopoly on force, and so we have to keep them accountable. Go Here, for it, Here's Patrick. a question, mm-hmm. because from from uh, my brain always comes at things from a more libertarian, laissez-faire thought process. But is it just? Do you see this from the law side, from the legal side? Because you're constantly reading the briefs, I'm sure. Do you see this as just? The the people that are against firearms want a monopoly on power. Is like, do you do you feel like that is? Because to me, I don't give a rat's hairy ass. But I, I don't care at all if people have whatever they have. You know, I, I couldn't imagine myself wanting to tell people no, you can't have that. It just doesn't work in my brain. So, no, I I'm with you, right? Um, I I I track on that mindset. You know, I don't want to force people to own or carry guns, but if you want to do it. You know, get your machine gun, right? It's uh, <laughs> right. Like if you you can have whatever gun you want, I don't care. Carry it in the White House, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I think there are people, you know, and there are uh, in this country who are, are powerful and they want to have a have a monopoly on control, and you know, having certain type of firearms or or, or carrying them out in public or, or being proficient in that stains in the way of them imposing their will on us you know um you know they they want to force us to believe things or or you know and i'm speaking just in my personal opinion on, on this or take force us to get you know a shot or force us to use certain pronouns for things and, and go against, against you know your religious beliefs and you know your firearm uh, gets in the way of that and, and for me, that's why I'm so passionate about this issue, because, you know, having the right to keep and bear arms is the, the teeth to protect my, you know, my beliefs, my, my, to express my faith, to um, uh, fight for the values and, and pass on the values that I, I want to my, to my children. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, being armed is, is what is the it's, it's our people's liberty teeth. I think George Washington is quoted as saying that. I'm not sure if he did, but the concept is wonderful. We guns are our teeth that actually uh, are able to protect our, our firearms, our, our our lifestyle, and our way of life, and our other freedoms. Yeah, I I don't think that's without a doubt. I just you know, and for us living in Florida, people living in 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 the states around the country that weren't so as affected as these nine states that are doing this there's people in those states and and for sure i think uh maryland has backed off for now so far as i could see right but the other states haven't and they've just layered things on there and there's people in those states so like when when the hell do we get relief what does it take what has to be done here i wonder again going back to the heart of why anti-gunners or anti-gun i wonder if some of it also has to do with grifting like in the same sense as uh al sharpton and and jesse jackson the only reason they do what they do is because it makes them a lot of money Mm -hmm. i wonder if some of these lawyers that are on the anti-gun side might just go listen i'll fight for for this as long as you want because it is a solid paycheck for the rest of my days you know no we're being a government lawyer is not like being uh, Morgan and Morgan. Well, okay. no, but like it's, it's, it's like a different, uh, Brady. It's a different world. 
mm-hmm. Brady, they I guarantee have a crap load of lawyers sitting over there well, looking where where they can do things, you know. But they have people that are fight, yeah. bankrolling. Yeah, yeah I don't so think the money's exactly. coming just from the government. I don't think the money's coming from just from the government. And then, unfortunately, for the for for the organizations out there, let's put it this way: like, who's fighting for the people, right? It's organizations like GOA, uh, FPC, ex- you know, whatever organizations that are out there, the folks. Uh, you know, support that are fighting for their freedom. Who is it that actually goes out there? The government, someone, someone already said in the chat, I think we all know this. They're basically fighting with your money, right? Yes. They, yeah. and, well, money they could print. It's not even your money. They could just print it, devalue your money, and keep yes. fighting you with it. What I'm trying to find out, and, and I don't necessarily, obviously, like, Jordan can't tell us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because all, all you could do at GOA is to keep fighting in every single place, and I know you guys are doing that. But what point are they going to get to when they stop? I mean, the logical yeah. next point, the ne- the logical next point here is that obviously there's going to be challenges in those states saying, "Hey, this is a direct violation of Bruin that just came out." You know, they have to seek. Uh, there, there has to be some kind of massive monetary uh, cost for that. Uh, you know. At, but even where does that stop? The government there in New York, they could just go, okay, we're just going to keep fighting that. How many years I'm, does it take for the well, Supreme I, Court what, to bring it up what again? What really encourages me is it, a lot of people like to say that the politics is, is downstream of culture, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have so many new, new gun owners now. You know, so many more people have bought guns, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and, and are getting training and and get their permission slips to carry, or maybe they live in a constitutional carry state now. Um, mm-hmm. But we have so many more people. So I think the culture um, that we have, if we can capitalize on that, and that's what at GOA, what we're trying to do. You know, Hank, you've been so generous. And you've highlighted some of our outreach programs. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to affect the culture because then in turn, that will affect politics. That mm-hmm. will help us kick out these people you know, uh, kick out the elected officials, because in many states, you know, uh, your state legislature has impact on your courts um, or their judges are elected, you know, just by the people. Um, So we can have a bigger, stronger pro-gun voting block because we've changed the culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we we will have it because, you know, when these issues come up, we'll have a pro-gun courts and, you know, hey, you know this you know new york with your gun laws that's awful and you have to do that and uh and reverse it and actually abide by the constitution because the culture around guns has changed can they really drag i know walter wanted to say something here um and you could jump in walt but can they really drag new york to that is there what is the how do we force new york how do we drag they new york to can't. that that's part of the problem, and I'm out of focus again. That's part of the problem is the, as far as I understand it, the Supreme Court can make rulings, but they have no way of forcing those rulings upon anyone. States have to take them up on their own, and the only way of forcing it upon a state is somebody within that municipality municipality has to sue, and the damages have to be big enough where the state will go, oh, we don't want this to happen again. We know we're going to lose if we keep following this path. Um, but otherwise, the Supreme Court has no way. Has of the state out ever been rules? Yeah. As this, go ahead, Walt. I, I know I interrupted you before. Well, we yeah. Say? I mean, the, the 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 best way to change things is get these bums out of office. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's the. That's what Jordan's saying, things. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Yes. Right. In, in a nutshell, yeah, you got to get them out of out of the picture. But yep. they're not going to leave willingly because it's a power trip. I mean, so and again, money. And, 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 it's, and it's a way. To, and it's a way to make a lot of money. Look at these these people get elected in office as poor you know, whatever child they are. And next they leave and they're millionaires. Yeah, it's not I mean, because this is why, like, we're talking about this Rhode Island state senator twerking. I mean, you, this is why. Well, not, if, I'll, you're I'll, you're I'll, basically, I'll, this is money. Why would you be out there doing this kind of thing except to you? You know well, you're locked in, and then, hey, you're just making real. money off the people. Let's talk real here. Mm-hmm. She's elected from a, from a district where it's mostly black people. Bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a, a lot poor, of people a poor, a poor district. <laughs> well, a lot of people in the hood or those right. neighborhoods think that is the coolest thing they've ever seen. You're not and wrong. She, is she the might be right. And, and they Can't like that, that big booty. They, they like yeah. that big ass shaking all over the place, right? Okay. Well, until you change those people's mindsets, where they where they go, she's wasting her time. What is mm-hmm. this woman doing? 
until you'll never you change. You, yes, you'll until you realize the politicians don't care about you because she comes from she comes from a poor district that obviously your politician from that district. Look, people could do whatever they want to do, you know. But if you're a politician serving the people and the people in your district are suffering, and you have enough time to go out on a beach and do that. This is the pro and I agree with you. It's the problem. Will will we ever actually be able to get rid of these people in places like New York or California or anything? The people as, there aren't willing to get rid of them. As long as the societal uh, norms allow that type of activity, you're never going to get rid of them, ever. Yeah. <laughs> then, and so then these states will never really be part of America. They're never gonna. They're never gonna give. Well, the people of these states access to their rights, uh, you know. Well, these people need to realize that these people are stealing from them, and until they do, you know, if somebody's stealing from you, you're gonna eventually you're gonna get tired of them and go bust chops, right? I mean, you know, I mean, Elections have consequences, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, so. that we're we're facing that with with Biden, right? And no matter your thoughts on the 2020 election, he's Big president, right. and yeah, really, you know, that we're, yeah. that's you know, we he you know sign gun control in the law and that's a consequence we're going to have to face so we got to change the culture and then that will change the politics and that will change um our, our rights you. you have yeah. to that whole societal de-evolution is part of this whole problem yeah so, you know what's funny it's, is it's i i don't think the the culture war from young americans i don't think is necessarily the hardest fight a lot of people like guns. A lot of youngins loved guns. A lot of people watching people like Brandon Herrera or stuff like that are already interested in firearms. So you're already halfway there, which is great. You know, that's the good thing is it, guns are cool as hell. You just have to the, – the harder part is getting somebody from, yeah, guns are cool as hell to, listen, vote. go vote. vote. This is why they're cool as hell, and you need to want them to keep them. And then uh, the whole politics side of it is so on, hard. On that election day or that time you yes. early vote, yes, I, yeah. I'll do it later. Ah, don't yes, matter. Uh, yes, that's know, a lot more like, difficult. I, I, I got to go. I got to go do this or I got to do that. You know. And it's yes. like, you know, but yeah. you know what the thing is? Here's here's my. So I agree with everything that you guys are saying wholeheartedly, right? And what did mm -hmm. I like? I'm a person who grew up in New York City, and and we moved away from there. When we moved from New York, we moved to New Jersey. I don't know. I don't really feel like it was any better. And we and that's how we wound up moving to Florida. So the first thing I did was move away from there, just get away from it, right? But what is it going to take that really changes people who live in these places and cannot just get up and move? I, I, the, and, and my answer from it, I'd like to hear what you guys think is the answer to that. My answer is they have to really suffer. They have to really, really feel the pain in order to change. Because right now what's happening, the rest of us are holding up a lot of these states, and they're not suffering. The people are not suffering and feeling the true pain of what comes out of what their politicians are doing. During the whole pandemic, did anybody really suffer? And why didn't Obviously they suffer? Not. Because, Obviously not. Because the government was handing out money. So okay. The government's not going to. The government's not going to let these people suffer because if they do, like you said, they'll finally realize, well, f with this stuff. I got to go do but something. But aren't people suffering yeah. now? And this sufferation that people are having right now is going is going to go on for a few years, even if we <laughs> swing the pendulum back the other way. Because even though it didn't look like people were suffering, we got inflation. We got people not working and producing things. All kinds of stuff has been set in motion for 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 those uh what was it well, like two and a half years or something that we were going through that and we're going to pay for it for at least another um two and a half or three or four years so hopefully at this time when these midterms happen something happens but i'm not i'm not betting on it this is not the 90s you know it's not the 90s anymore where you didn't have the influence of the internet and everything else mm -hmm. now now people they sit and they watch they're like you know they all they do is they watch their phone and what pops up on their phone mm -hmm. and um they don't people don't react the same anymore yeah so uh yeah. Jordan, but, but, Jordan, hey, you gonna say you, something? i i just have a, a comment um mm -hmm. some of these people who are you know behind enemy enemy lines mm -hmm. do they know that their rights are even being infringed upon because well, i don't no. leave my i haven't left my house today but i have a, i'm carrying a gun that's my mindset right some people and this is where how we need to affect the culture but some people don't even 
think about carrying a gun. That doesn't even enter their mind because they've been brainwashed or taught that, hey, guns are dangerous. Only the police should have guns or uh, or, you know, we don't you don't need to carry a gun to protect yourself or all, any of that type of nonsense. So, so they don't even realize that their rights are being infringed because they don't know they had the right to begin with. I think I think the answer to that is yes and no. I think there are people in California or New Jersey or yeah. New York who do want to defend themselves. They do yeah, realize absolutely. that exists. They are law abiding, hard working people. They mm-hmm. realize that even though there's a shit ton of cops, the cops are never there when they're getting robbed, you know, or assaulted or whatever. I think they realize that. And ultimately, yeah, I think the easiest decision to make is the one where you can where you get out of there if you can. Right. And uh, but I think that there's a lot of cases where people can't get away from that. Yeah. You know, go ahead. Go ahead, Patrick. I think you want to say something. No, there's just there's so many things. Avoiding a confrontation is always the best thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I I actually just taught uh, uh, somebody uh, the my I ran through the CCW course the other night for somebody. And I always try to stress that, like avoiding situations, keeping your head on a swivel, Mm -hmm. knowing what's going on is always your best situation. But if push comes to shove and you have to use it, then here's how you're backed up. Yeah. By it. No, I think um, I, I understand that. What I'm saying is, what is? Do you think there's ever going to be a point in America where these states, like we just went through, we just went through this thing for two years, right? And and th- those states are still functioning, and they shouldn't be. Well, <laughs> they shouldn't. And that's be. exactly what I said. <laughs> do you think the federales are going to let these people? suffer really suffer not not no just, no, no i don't no. think so unfortunately no you know they want to no. they want to lower the gas tax that's you know for a short period of time well why don't you just get the hell out of the energy business and let the companies run it and guess what will happen you'll have all the energy you can freaking use forever once the government gets no matter what they do no. they no matter what they do they can't physically drop the price of gas just based on inflation alone no Get so I mean, we're not the... we're not gonna see we're not gonna see two bucks ever again. Sorry. Well, you I guys would be lucky you. if you ever see three bucks. You want to no, bet? I think it, I think it'll happen. You no, I'm with bet? Walter I'll on this. I'll bet on this one. Uh, I, I I don't think so. Uh, what, remember, Markets... remember Obama? Remember Obama? <laughs> Obama? It was four something a gallon too. Remember? Uh, markets remember that? correct themselves. It yes. just depends on supply and demand will fix it if you get the hell out of the way. Yeah. You have to I, I agree. Of... I agree with that. If we get the hell out of the way, but what is the what what is there anything that like shows that the these guys the are going to get? It? Yeah, what shows well, that they're going to get out of the way? Well, as soon as okay, look, man. You remember when Biden got elected? He started canceling contracts. He started shutting down oil leases. Mm-hmm. And guess what happened? The oil companies said, "All right, fine, sure." Mm-hmm. Up, up, yeah, because they knew they're going to make up, up, up. massive. Yes, exactly. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, the oil, the, I mean, the, the oil companies are going to make money regardless of what happens here, because the reality is we need these fuels in order to, to keep everything moving forward. Well, yeah, and so forward, let's, not, let's not pussyfoot around. <laughs> let's not pussyfoot around with all this stuff, and let's pump this pump the stuff out of the ground and refine it and, and put people to work. Tens of thousands of jobs in the oil industry are not... People aren't working now. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that the the Americans out there that are really suffering from this kind of stuff. Yeah, the the Americans who this extra hundred dollars means that, you know, they can't go on vacation or whatever it is every time they fill up. I think I think they don't give a shit about politics right now. I think they agree with you. They're like, just just get that stuff out there. Or the kids might not be eating enough food. Yeah. So, you know, so and you look, I mean, that whole region in the middle of the country, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, there's oil through that whole region there. When back when Obama was the president, mm-hmm. that was a boom in that part of the country. People were pumping oil. I mean, when it went up so high to get prices before. Now, I don't know if that's happening now, but, you know. I think I think this is a tough I think it's a tough thing and as it relates to guns there are people in the states when you, when you saw for example in the news there was this guy in New York City in the bodega the who moved my freedom podcast is made possible by our partners at 2A commerce veteran owned and with over 20 years experience 2A commerce 
is the leader in custom e-commerce and web application development in the shooting sports industry. Clients include major brands such as Guard Dog Body Armor, Sylvan Arms, AccuFire Technologies, The Tactical Games, Warrior Knife Company, and yours truly, Hank Strange. Visit 2A Commerce and support this show by supporting them. Once again, visit the number 2 A Commerce. Dot com. Right. Okay. <laughs> Before I so rudely interrupted myself, <laughs> nice I was talking about, uh, you know, this guy, I think he's a grandfather that was working in a bodega and was assaulted by a guy and decided to defend himself, uh, you know, and, uh, and, kill, and wound up, you know, killing this guy with a knife. But he, he, he felt like he was in danger. He had to defend himself in New York City. That guy's catching murder charges from the, and he's the guy that sitting. he was, yeah, he's in he's prison. He's currently sitting in Rikers Island. And that place is... I looked at some videos of that place. That place is... It's not whoo, fun. That is an awful prison. Yeah. Uh, my dad... When, when my dad started teaching in New York City, that's, you know, that's where the Board of Ed sends you to. And I remember him telling me that it made him depressed for a long time. It's, it's a bad... Yeah. It looks like a bad place. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the, I mean, this guy is defending himself against, like, a career criminal. And this is what happens in New York City. And this is what a lot of people are facing. You well, know, and, and again, how do they get away from this? But but what do you, how do you fix that? You get these New York politicians, city politicians out of office. I mean, that wasn't always the case in New York City. Yeah. There was a time in New York City where it was run a little differently. Um, uh, please don't please don't say by Giuliani. I know you don't want to hear please about don't it. Say, please wait, don't say wait, by Giuliani. Way, Giuliani way was a criminal. Way, 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 way before you were in the United States. Way, way before you were in the United States. Maybe, yeah. b- okay, maybe, but not Giuliani, That's though. So, I, I lived in New York I, City. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I, I smelled New York City before Giuliani. I smelled it after. I smelled better with Giuliani. So. Um... Listen, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any problems with the tough on crime thing. The problem is, and this happens in places like New York City and in California. I mean, we saw that with the current vice president. The people who are in power, in, including those in law enforcement, they don't really try to help the people, they try to help themselves. That's the problem with Giuliani, and I think even with, uh, what's her name, uh, Kamala Harris or whatever. She was just really trying to help herself. That's the problem with all politicians, all, yeah. every single one of them. Yeah, exactly. I want to see the people really help people. And I think one of the things that can really help people in America where they have this kind of problem is if they can defend themselves. Yes, absolutely. Even when you take the guns out of the equation, this man had no right to defend himself. It's insane. You still have to have law and order. You can have all the guns in the world, but you don't want it to turn into the Wild West with your guns. You still have to have... I'm, people I, enforcing the laws. I don't. I don't. I believe that. But <laughs> here's the thing: is you have to have people who have. I like, shouldn't. You have to have people who have integrity. It. it we, we need yes. people who I, have I, integrity. I, 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 right. I agree right. with that so much, Hank. I, I think of so many of our founding fathers who who said items to the effect that our republic is made for a, a moral and righteous people, and um, you know we. You know, I'm speaking personally. I feel like we live in such a godless society, you know, where um, heck, we elect people who, you know, we've talked about before who dance and, you know, all sort of ways. That's our elected uh, politicians now. You know, we need to change the culture and then which will change the politicians. Yes, people in, in general in society, we need to have limits of what like what you can what you could do or say or depict and all that kind of stuff uh publicly moral, yeah kind of some, some kind Listen, of moral the the, code. the the mayor of new york city was a police officer okay and right now that guy is is getting charged with murder as patrick said is in rikers island and the mayor of new york city was a police officer this is a completely different thing from giuliani right it only but separated by party <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Someone who says that, oh, I care about, you know, minorities. I care about people out there and what they're going through. Oh, and he, he doesn't he give a, a minority. shit. What are you talking about? Yeah, he is I a know. minority, right? Right, right. But he doesn't give a shit about that, though. He does no, not care now, about now, that. Now he's in the power spot, so he can just enrich himself yeah. and yeah. his friends. Yes. 
Yeah, and I could tell you the reason why even where why this means something to me. Like I remember as a kid living in New York City when the whole Bernard Getz thing happened, and and I was a that I was, was a big a, deal. Yeah. And but that there was a huge amount of New Yorkers, from what I understand, that were on his side that said, "Yeah, me included." Me included as like a young yeah. black kid in New York City. <laughs> yeah who you would think, you know, statistically would not be on the side of Bernard Getz. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm on his side. Because yeah. guess guess who got robbed by people who look just like him? Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I know what that means. I know what it means when someone says, like, oh, do you have the time? Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do for that watch? What are you going to do for your shoes or your, you know, back then you could die over your Walkman, believe it or not. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you still can die over your shoes. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm day. laughing because I I've been watching uh, clips from Death Wish, that like '70s movie. Yeah, and that's listen, straight up like Bernard Getz stuff. <laughs> about about listen, several years ago, my niece living in New York City, someone hit her in the head with a hammer to take her phone. Her her mm. iPhone. So oh, you mean it wasn't? They didn't use a gun. No, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying I'm to wondering. tell you, I'm just trying to tell you that this is the craziness that people are living under. And where does the relief come? Like, I get it. I'm with it. Move, get away from there. And I also agree with you guys. It's on the people. The people of these places should start That's holding the these politicians accountable, regardless of who they are. I don't care who they are. If you are corrupt, you should be punished for that. That's the way I feel about yeah. it. Right. I'm a Republican, but that doesn't mean like one of the reasons why I don't like Giuliani. He was incredibly corrupt. Right. And so that's my thing. If you're good, if you're going to hold office, the people need to hold you accountable for that. That's just the bottom line of it, regardless of where your political party is, you should be held accountable for that. Absolutely. You, you know, know, every politician in this country swears an oath to protect the Constitution. I, I think most of them are. You know, either they don't, they don't think about it or, or, you know, what they're actually doing or they're just lying when they swear that oath. But, you know, they, it, it's on us to to hold them accountable um, and hold them accountable to their oath. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. So, um, you know, I, I, I but ultimately it's just the answer to it is not us, though. That's the problem. Like, we yeah. can't go in there and rescue those people and take over the states or something. Like, I mean, I guess we could, but, you know, we'd probably be in, in still in a bad position because I feel like there's just people who just want to be slaves. <laughs> they just want to yeah. be slaves to these people, you know, and they don't ever want to be free. If you go in there and you take it over, then they'll just be slaves to you. And I don't want to own slaves. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's, I think it's the most despic despicable thing on the face of the planet, but it's literally what politicians are doing to people. You know, how the hell does Pelosi and all these people still exist out there? Go ahead. Jordan. I think that your your point, your larger point, was kind of going back to what I, I said earlier. People don't know the rights that they have, and so they like their their you know their their chains to, to the government. You know, when, when when they're told that, oh, you don't need a gun to protect yourself because the government will take care of you, then, you know, you don't know you had the right to protect yourself. Um, so you don't even know the rights that you have. That's why you are just so dependent upon, you know, big daddy government. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people, to your point, I know I was talking to a lot of folks about red flag laws, and I don't yeah. think a lot of people realize what red flag laws are. Yeah. When you explain to them that someone could just realizing that, you know, here, Florida, for example, where we have guns, we all get that. Everyone gets it. But when you tell people like, hey, you know, if someone, if you threaten someone or they feel threatened by you, they could just go out there and say, oh, this guy threatened me. I think he's got guns. Someone comes and shows up and takes all your guns from you without giving you due process. When I tell people that, they're like, what the hell are you talking about? That That's not possible. Well, <laughs> as you all know, in the case of Gary Willis red flag laws was that was a death sentence mm -hmm. and you know I, i'm sure you're all familiar with with gary willis but he was red flagged in maryland i think he had an argument with a niece or something and police came to his door 5 17 in the morning he answered the door with a gun because that's what you do when someone's at your door at 5 17 when in the knocks morning my door at five o'clock in the morning that's absolutely what i do mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and the, the police killed him you mm -hmm. know so that's kind of how I look at red flag laws. Is that's a death sentence for gun owners, um, <laughs> you know. So, um, who who flies the red flag? 
And now you just answer your question. What countries it's... fly red flags? Communists. Oh, communist, communist yeah. countries fly red communist. flags. Yeah. So, th is it coincidental? I don't know. Do you think the Chinese would support our red flag laws? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. No, I mean, they, they would. They, to yeah. Jordan's point a little bit earlier, though, Americans don't have, I really don't think most Americans have a good concept of truly what the Constitution means and what it does for for people, for American citizens, for humans. It's, there's nothing like that in the rest of the world. And and people don't really have any appreciation for what it actually is. I think Americans today, Americans today, um, you know, as someone who immigrated to America and went to, I went to, uh, you know, the end of junior high school, high school here in America, even in New York City, uh, I figured that out, you know. But I think that today a lot of folks, you're right. They don't know that. A lot of the people who no clue are growing up now don't, yeah, they don't understand that. They don't realize that. They don't know why it's important. Also, I would say this, Patrick. I think people, people believe, Americans believe that they've got rights, even though they don't know them, they believe they've got rights all over the world. Yeah, they got rights. They got rights. To, <laughs> the stuff they get upset about, they don't have any rights to. Yeah, people think they can go somewhere else and they would have right. So, for example, if we're talking about there's the basketball player the chick. Basketball player in, 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 in Russia. Russia. Yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, she don't she doesn't have any rights in Russia. I always tell people, you go to another country, you'd be surprised. You don't screw around. Even, even countries you think that, oh, it's that's in Europe. I could go over there and do whatever I want to do. Don't screw around you know, in other people's countries. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have these rights that, like, you know, yeah. when you see the movies, they go, I'm an American. <laughs> All I got. All I have to do is get to the embassy. All, no. The embassy's not going to let you in right away. But trust me. No. First of all, yeah, yeah. Good here. luck getting to that embassy. You're going to yeah. get shot before you make it in there. <laughs> it's yeah. not like the movies. But you don't have those rights, you know. And I don't think people really realize that. Often, folks tell me, "Oh, yeah, I'm I'm done with America. It's terrible. I'm going to go you live." You have no in some idea other... of what the rest of the world's Ooh. like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I am so grateful for our founders because it, as imperfect as they were, I believe they set up the best system of government that, and as flawed as it is, but to preserve our rights. And to preserve, you know, they instituted a, a system of government that, hey, government, your job is to protect the rights of the people. That's, that's your purpose, you know, and, and, you know, and whether it wasn't a king, it wasn't, a dictatorship it was a constitutional republic and and i'm so grateful for their wisdom yeah you know what's funny about that particular case i believe her name is Brittany greer or something uh you know what's funny about that i think she pleaded guilty recently to something and they're trying and hoping basically throwing herself on the mercy of the court yeah, well so russia offered a deal do you know who who russia wants in exchange for her oh god who the Merchant of Death. You know who the Merchant of Death? Remember that there's yeah, a there's yeah, a Ukrainian yeah. guy. He was in a. The, you know the movie. I think it's is it called? Um, oh, what is the name of the guy that's the Merchant of Death? If you Google him, you'll see what I'm saying. There was a movie about him. He's basically a Ukrainian that sold all these arms. He's like a billionaire. I think he's worth like uh, five billion dollars or something like that. Um, okay, so they want him. Yeah, he's locked up. You know, Victor Bout. Victor Bout, this guy, this is who, this is who they want back in exchange for her, okay, you know, so. and, uh, <laughs> I don't know, they, if they make that deal, you know, they will literally trade out this guy, I think he only has, like, a couple of years, I think he caught, like, a 25-year sentence in America for, for his crimes for selling guns all over the world. And this guy worked for the American military at one point. If you ever look up Victor Bout, the merchant of death, I don't know if you guys have ever looked him looked him up, but he sold a lot of guns all over the world, and um, Nicolas Cage has played him in a movie. Oh, that movie, yeah, I know, who, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So right now, we've got this guy locked up. He got 25 years in federal prison. There you go. Wait, did he have an FFL? Uh, yes, he, he did a whole bunch of stuff. He did a whole bunch of... This guy's, you know... And so they're they're trying to, like, uh... You know, they're trying to get that guy in exchange for her. So... Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I... 
I'm sure she'll be happy to get out of, you know, get out of prison. And I don't know if everyone realizes that this is what's happening. And I'm not, I'm not trying to guarantee that's going to happen. But you guys could, in the next couple of weeks, see her get released and see that guy uh, get out of here. But I would say hell no. That's my, if, if it was up to me, I'd say no. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know why they convicted this guy and gave him 25 years. He shouldn't be. This is one um, of the problems with America. People commit you, gun you, crimes you, you, and you don't would, ever pay for why, it. Why, why do we do that typically? Because they know something about us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He still has That's a lot of money, they, by the way, which is why, funny. Why, why go ahead? I mean, you know, okay, Merchant of Death. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty. I'm um, selling weapons. Has he always worked. went on, and it yeah. still goes on, all mm -hmm. over the world. We're the only country that, so, that thinks that, oh my God, we can't do that because, look at the Russians and Chinese mm -hmm. and the Iranians are selling shit to everybody. It does, um, well, busy. when they busted him, they busted him selling weapons to kill Americans. That's when. That's when. But he has worked for America. If you look into oh, it, okay. he has worked for America. But he's also that. he's also the guy that sold weapons to countries in Africa that had child, you know, these children going around killing mm -hmm. their own families and all that kind of stuff. But that's not why America, uh, ultimately America caught him because he was going to sell weapons to kill Americans. Because ultimately he didn't give a shit. He wasn't a good guy. Oh. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a good guy. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't you, Walt. I don't know that you would necessarily do some of the the things this guy was doing, but if he was going to do that, then why? I mean, why is he even in prison, man? We we don't need we don't we don't really need him on the planet, do we? That's that's the funny thing. But I agree with you. He probably know if he dies, there's probably like a dead man's trigger on a bunch of stuff that's going to get released into the world. You know, dead man's trigger. <laughs> that will, that will, <laughs> I mean, I think, that's a for real think, thing. That's a for real thing. I think, we, people... I think we over sensationalize things at times. No, there's um, people that have that. I've heard, I've heard. Look, uh, we, I've, we, 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 we sold, we, we, mm -hmm. we provided weapons to, we see the North Vietnamese. We provided mm -hmm. weapons to the Taliban. We, every place we've went to war, we've provided weapons when we, when I put our tail between our legs and left. Mm -hmm. Um, are we throwing those politicians in jail? I think the politicians that are responsible for guns that went across the border, okay, uh, to Mexico, I think all those people should be in prison, including Bush. Yeah. <laughs> that's I that's, that's what I think about that. Bush part, but yeah, okay, it was it was there primarily was, Obama was, and his secretary. There was there state, was multiple so. there were multiple people that were doing that. That happened through that happened through and, a few different and all the ATF people. Yeah, oh. absolutely. I think they should all be in prison, and and people who were really running that stuff, we figured that out. They they shouldn't they shouldn't be around. Look, I, I'm not a fan of Oliver North, man. For that matter, to be honest with you, I know people are fans of Oliver North. I'm not a fan of Oliver North. It doesn't. It to me, it doesn't matter. Like ultimately, they did really bad things that wound up killing a lot of people and messing a lot of people up in order to do something that the, that the government didn't want to sanction them to do. And then there's folks well, out there who think they're heroes for that. I don't. What makes me angry is they do everything that y'all are describing, but gosh, if I have a uh, an AR with a 15-inch barrel and it's not registered, then I'm the criminal, and they won't think twice about prosecuting me and throwing me in jail for, for having you know an unregistered SBR. You know, mm -hmm. so like it, the hypocrisy there is just absurd when, they, you know, they only enforce the law when it's convenient for them. Yeah, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think there should be I think that there should be some, uh, you know, consequences for some of the things that folks do out there. And when we catch the people that do it, then, you know, they should they should get heavy uh, consequences for that, man. What did yeah. uh, the basketball girl do to the Russian? She run her mouth or something, or what? She no. brought in a couple of vape pens, yeah, weed she... vape pens. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but you don't. She was playing for them. She was playing basketball for Russia. Yeah, she was playing basketball for Russia. But you don't <laughs> screw with other people's laws. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it. That same thing will get you will get you uh, killed in Saudi Arabia. So you I go mean... to the wrong country, do stuff like that, they will yeah. hang you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so now obviously in her case, I don't think it's going to come to that because people are aware of it. But I think as Jordan was just saying, if you go over there and and you get into that situation, you're 
I'm, I'm you know, speechless, man. Like, I really don't know. What so, What is Walter playing over there? Really so, <laughs> somebody sent me a video. I think somebody's going to blow a gun up. Um, oh. Oh, okay. That's a hard, that is a crime. <laughs> well. Well, yeah. That's a travesty. <laughs> that's a travesty. Yeah, listen. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we could obviously settle all of these things. I know time is uh, running down here on us, you know, Um but what I would say is this, man, you know, there is justice. I do believe in God, like uh, Jordan said. We're going to be right We wouldn't be able to keep the Who Moved My Freedom podcast going without the support of manufacturers like Safety Harbor Firearms. SHF is a quintessential family-owned small business, totally representative of the American dream. Safety Harbor Firearms is a Florida-based manufacturer of the compact entry stock, and the SHTF 50 upper for an AR-15 lower. Also, SHF happily delivers on your Sten Gun parts needs. So don't forget to check out StenParts.com and SafetyHarborFirearms.com. Yeah, there is justice coming for everyone, man. I know that you might be able to get away with it uh, with, uh, you know here on earth but you know not forever hey you know how we you know how we were talking about old ammo Mm -hmm. 1938 (laughs) on this ammo right here wow pre-world war ii that's cool okay that one you shot 84 years old same age as my dad this stuff went off just like it was brand new yeah it went off just like your dad will go off on on, on somebody yeah (laughs) trust me yeah you're right (laughs) he stopped by the shop today as a matter of fact oh boy okay completely unexpected yeah how's he doing uh, same old self. Same okay, old self. good. Yeah, Jordan, you probably don't know this, but Walter's dad had a stroke. Uh, no, no. Yeah, but he's obviously no, fine. <laughs> no physical, you uh, know, paralysis or anything yeah. like that. But you know, when he when it happened, he showed up in my shop one morning and he was like deer in the headlights. Yeah. You know, he just. Mm-hmm. And um, so we went to the emergency room and went through the whole thing. And yes, he had a stroke, and but luckily for him, no messed up body parts you know just uh Absolutely. and he's all he's pretty much back to his old self which well that's good or bad um crotchety at times and um and who knows where he got that from i don't know that's you know, I mean, well i mean he didn't get it from me he got it from <laughs> no he obviously I didn't get it from you <laughs> yeah, he I gave mean, it to you gr- though <laughs> my gr- well my grandfather you know my grandfather when he had a heart condition also and, and what killed my grandfather when, when they were roof, r- putting a roof on his house one year in the summertime in florida he had to get up on the roof and supervise mm-hmm. and um that ended up at, he was in the hospital when he died so you mm-hmm. know let the young folk do the roofing right uh, you don't need to watch <laughs> you don't <laughs> need to be a, the boss you know, of everything yeah exactly yeah it'll yeah. take care of itself yeah, absolutely. Okay. Listen, we're over the nine o'clock hour. We do we do need to wrap this up here. And uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with Jordan. Uh, big thanks. Good to see you here on the show, Jordan. By the way, uh, it's 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 always good to see you, man. One of these days, I'm gonna run back through the old shows and show you know when he was twelve. <laughs> yeah, show when you were younger. He wasn't. He wasn't twelve. I think he was still just... an intern. I think he was still an intern oh, okay. at GOA when we started doing things with him, though. Right? Maybe I did. I had to go back and look, but I'm pretty guys, sure you were still a, intern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been a blast hanging out with y'all. I I really um, glad to call y'all my friends, and um, I love seeing you at events. And I need to see y'all other guys at some events sometime. Um, but uh, um, I just appreciate the opportunity to, to be on here and share GOA's message, and uh, I, I appreciate everything y'all do for GOA and the Second Amendment. It just means a lot uh, to me, and GOA is very grateful for all of y'all. Yeah, we, I, I think we feel the same way, man. We appreciate all the folks at GOA. I know there are more folks now, which is a good thing, and uh, all the fighting at, that those folks are doing on our behalf. Do you want to tell the people out there, if they want to like communicate with you, find out more about you, where should they go, man? Where should the folks go to link up with you? Yeah, well... Um... Publicly, you know, best to find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, it's just Jordan K. Stein um, on both of those platforms, so you can, can find me there. But, you know, also, 
Um, if you're not already, you can become a GOA member at gunowners.org. You, know, you can join for 25 bucks. So uh, it's, I used to say it's less than a box of ammo, and then it was, you know, now you can't oh, yeah. buy ammo. So, you know, now yeah. it's like you can um, – uh, it's a lot cheaper than a box <laughs> ammo, so you know, just twenty five dollars to join up at gunowners dot org. So, absolutely, I'm a I'm a lifetime member of uh, GOA. Yeah. So. I, I think I'm a year to year member, but I do mm-hmm. support GOA. Yeah, absolutely, Babyface. Tell the folks how they can uh, communicate with you, find out more about you, the Babyface P projects. YouTube dot com slash Babyface P or uh, Instagram Baby underscore Face P. Uh, if you want to go see me shooting a flamethrower, go check out my Instagram. It was thanks to Walter. But uh, that's that's how you can find me. I'll, I do have projects coming. I'm not sure what they'll be or when they'll be here, but we'll have some more stuff coming up eventually. I just got to figure it out. Yeah, I guarantee you there's more footage of, of that flamethrower from this weekend than guns. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I have some good stuff. I haven't put it up yet. Walt, uh, how can the folks, where can the folks... Uh, go to to find out more about you, communicate with you, uh, etc. They want to see us. Uh, Safety Our Farms is on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Also on Utreon. Um, um, Dirtfoot Racing, the stuff I do with the mini bikes and things with the engines and such. Once again, you t- uh, safe. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, are you sure you're not having a stroke right now, Walter? Do we need to be concerned about you? <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and some Utreon stuff. Yeah. And then there's StunParts.com, you know, for all yeah. your Stun Parts needs. Yes, yes. absolutely. No, I, 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 don't, I don't believe I'm having a stroke right at the moment, but um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let you know when it happens. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't be joking around about it. it can happen know, to anyone. We're all old enough for, us, uh, for it to happen it's, to It can us. happen to very young people, too, by the way. Yeah, too, absolutely, so. yes. Um, Armin and Axis says Jordan is a good brother. Um, I totally agree with that. Look, a lot of last time I saw Jordan, I always give Jordan a hard time when I see him because I love him so much. But I am very proud proud of you, Jordan, and good to see that you're still out there fighting the good fight, man, and doing all the stuff that you do. You know, it's it's really cool to uh, catch up with you every now and then, man. But I I just want you to know that very proud of you. I am going to do this. I'm going to run in the end, and we're going to come back, and you, I'm going to elect you to leave us with words of wisdom. So you got a couple of seconds to come up with your <laughs> words of wisdom, and uh, we're going to be back here. I'm going to run in the end right now. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us here on the show. We're going to rip the audio out of this, throw it up on iTunes and all your other favorite places to get your audio podcast from. We are members of the Firearms Radio Network, to sh- so shout out to all the folks who are joining us from there. Big thanks to Babyface P. Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms, as well as Jordan Stein of GOA. Jordan, words of wisdom. All right. I, I guess I've been saying this all throughout the podcast. I didn't prepare this or anything but like you know we've said you know politics is downstream of culture right we want to get rid of these bad gun control laws we want to hold you know anti-gun politicians accountable right so we have to go out and affect the culture right so everyone has a sphere of influence of people who we can affect right and that if you if you're a parent it might be your children you know if you're a high schooler it might be you know people who go to high school with Use your sphere of influence to change lives um, uh, for for the better, right? You know, take your friends shooting. You know, have have the conversations about the issues. Um, you know, use those the relationships you have because everyone has influence on each other. No matter what you think, you have influence over other people. Use your influence for good, so we can affect the culture and and uh, affect the politics downrange. Absolutely, Jordan Stein, 2024. We're gonna see. I don't know when he's running for office. Jordan, <laughs> I, I, I will declare. Listen, I I am running, but I'm running for the hills. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, guys, we are out of here. Let me hit the buttons. Hold on, I gotta press these buttons properly here, and then we're. <laughs>